Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chess.com's, one of Chess.com's flag events, the titled Tuesday competition. I absolutely love this competition myself. When I'm not doing commentary for Chess.com, I try to play, and I've played a lot of these events. It's really a brilliant event online where only title players can fight each other and try to qualify for other events that Chess.com are running, but there's prize money involved with this one. And you can see some of the big names. We'll have a look at those uh, very soon. Now, what is the format for chess.com? Well, the format is that this is every Tuesday around about this time, normally this time, if you want to play. Remember, you do have to have a title. The time control is three minutes plus one second of move. It's 10 rounds um, of Swiss tournaments. And then after the 10 rounds, so when I say Swiss open tournament, sometimes they've even attracted 800 to 1,000 players, title players in this event, which is crazy. When I, I think there's only about 1,500 grandmasters in the world. So attracting 1,000 title players is, is fantastic. But then the top eight players at the end of the 10, 10 rounds go into the knockout stage and they play against each other until there's just one winner. And it really is very exciting. I'm going to try to keep up with the pace as much as I can. Not easy because um, there's so many good games going on. I will have a look at the chat mainly in both Chess TV, so over at chess.com TV and also at chess, twitch.tv chess. So if there's any really good games you want me to look at, I do sometimes type there. I probably won't read it, but, you know, you never know. I might read it. It's worth a try. Um, okay. And um, the so the time format, you've got the eight-player knockout. That is then go down to quarterfinals and then the semifinals and finals. So that will be after the, the main competition, which roughly goes on for two hours. And then we'll we're better see who the top eight players are to, to go through to that one. And we get an interview with the winner right at the end. So it's a really exciting day of chess. I'm looking forward to it. And um, uh, yeah, what other events are going on or have been going on that sort of are part of this chess.com, shall we say, Grand Prix of the Speed Chess Championships, which results in 100,000 in prizes. Now, that's that's not bad, is it? That is not bad. 100,000 in prizes. Thank you, chess.com, for these events. Well, this one you can see on the page there is the bottom right, Speed Chess Grand Prix. And the top four from this competition, not today, but over the over the sort of last couple of, uh, well, more than couple, over the last tournaments, the top four in the league will go through to compete in this, as you can see, where the arrows are leading the, the big tournament, the Speed Chess Championships. Now, very exciting times because tomorrow you've got the junior speed chess championships where we have um let me remember nihal sarin playing of india and he's going to be playing against the russian player sarawana so one of them is going to qualify for speed chess championships another two players who have already qualified is hikaru nakamura i expect you've heard of him apparently he's pretty good at this game and also someone who just qualified very recently and that is Vladimir Fedosev. Um, so these guys have already qualified for that. And what about the standings just for the titled Tuesday event? Well, you can see there the leaderboard and the top four players on that leaderboard are, um, well, shall we say, in a good position to qualify. So you've got Hikaru Fedosev. But I, I guess because those two have already qualified, spaces three to six are actually the next people at the moment who are looking like they could qualify. So you've got Vladislav Artimev, you've got uh, Parham, and then you've got Hike, who has been playing a lot of the stuff. And then you've got and Nordibek. I'm going to call him Nordibek because I find it very hard to pronounce his name. One of the youngest ever grandmasters in the world. And these guys are sort of fighting for those qualification places. So it's pretty damn exciting, right? Yeah, it is. I'm looking forward to it. So we got some, um, yeah, pretty pretty good things coming up. Now, before we get started with the action, 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 let me remind you of your favorite wolf. And I'm not talking about your, your, your dog, Dick, even though I'm sure he's a lovely wolf. 
we are talking about our favorite Dr. Wolf. And if you guys want to improve your chess with some personal lessons and you don't want to pay the price you have to pay to get me, even though I don't do lessons anymore, then check out Dr. Wolf. He will look at your strengths and weaknesses and he can be downloaded to Android and iOS. It sounds like I'm the shopping channel now. I love it. And uh, maybe I can get a role there. Anyone watching? Get me on the shopping channel, maybe. And uh, it is a very, very good program to generally help you improve. And why why not give it a go? I mean, it's uh, free to download. So just see how you get on with it. I'm sure you will enjoy it. So hello to everyone in the chat. And like I say, I'll be keeping an eye on twitch.tv chess and elsewhere but i think it's about to start now in one and a half minutes so um any second now we're, we're going to be getting the action uh of, of the games coming through so we can have a look at the the list of players um who have entered so we do have hikaru at the top there so um hikaru right at the top and then you've got fedosev who's also qualified proving he's a brilliant blitz player now to my sins you can trying to burn me at the stake if you want to. Um, not that I'm actually a witch. Um, but we have this guy in third place who I haven't heard of. Can you, you know, that's really bad. I should have heard of this player. And I don't always, let me just go to his name. Sorry about that. It's Giga Q, I'm going to call him Giga. Let's just stick with that. And from Georgia. Sorry, I should have told you we're moving over there, but you know that. And Giga, I've never heard of him. And that's really bad. I should know these players, but he's the third seed. And we could just scroll down just to pick up some other names that uh, you might be interested in following. Liam Lee always does very well. All these guys are great. Adri Aking of Russia is number nine. Then you have Juboff, who I really like watching, Daniel Juboff, because uh, he is, well, he's one of Carlson's seconds and one of the most imaginative players around. So I'm very excited to see some of his games. We might actually start with one of his games. We got uh, Parham here, um, and he's a brilliant blitz player. And we can see he was in position um, to, at the moment, qualify. Um, Sergei Karyakin, another great playing. Prague, one of the strongest juniors in the world there. Arabian Falcon is Salim of UAE. And the list just goes on. I mean, Peter Svidler, look where he is. He's down there somewhere, and he's pretty handy as well. One of the weirdest handles we've got, Exotic Princess. And Exotic Princess did... Okay, the games have started. Let's go in. So we're going to we're gonna move in. But Exotic Princess is Jabava. And Jabava did actually win this competition a couple of weeks ago when I commentated. I'm his lucky charm. So let's get up to date with this game with Daniel Juboff. And it starts off with a Nimzo Indian. And now we have a pretty sort of main line here was c5 now we do have the evaluation bar here so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on and it looks like a fairly sensible opening so far and what i mean by that is um daniel juboff i said he's an extremely imaginative player but in this game because he's playing someone lower rated a good strategy is to keep it quite simple don't take too many risks and I think what he's done still here is very clever because what's the pawn doing on f3? In these types of position, white wants a knight on f3. It's much more active having a knight on that square, which can zoom into the center. So Daniel Jubos playing this position, and this is an isolated pawn position. Two ways to evaluate a position. Look at the pawn structure and look at the pieces. I say the pawn structure is like, um, well, it's like the skeleton. It's like your skeleton because it holds up your position and the pieces are like your organs which makes the skeleton move not maybe like this but i'm just demonstrating kind of what a skeleton might do if it had organs so it's going to be a weird one today isn't it and here normally when you have when you have the isolated pawn you want to start an attack against h7 this is the key thing i i used to teach people so you can try to bring the bishop around here and go queen d3 is the standard way to do this and what black wants to do, because this pawn can be weak later on, black wants to exchange off pieces. So maybe something like knight a5. Okay, this is a very sensible move. Eventually put the knight there. Make some exchanges. Because the more pieces that 
black can exchange off, the weaker this pawn becomes. So this is a very good idea. And now the knight might be coming into c4. And I think black's made very good progress here. And um, in actual fact, white hasn't really managed to get any play against the king. And giving up this bishop, I really don't like that because that bishop of white's is the main attacking piece on this diagonal. So everything looking very good um, for Daniil Duboff there as he grinds this one out. Okay, well let's let's go in let's go and dart around some of the other games that could be of interest. We're going to have a look at Hikaru, shall we? Let's see how Hikaru is doing. And he is clearly winning here. Tricky, not as tricky as he'd like to be. He's the exchange up here, and he has these rather useful pawns there in the center of the board. So that's that's also quite handy. Hikaru is going to win this first game. So I always like looking for, you know, um, shall we say, like, I don't know what you what you say, like, God, I've lost the words now. Like, you know, upsets, I think, is the word I was looking for. <laughs> Ikaru has won that one. So I don't know if we have any upsets on the go, but I see another big game going on here. And this is Sergei Karyakin, who's obviously um, fought for the World Championships. And um, in this position, Sergei with the black pieces, is looking um, pretty solid at this moment in time. And um, I would say, who's better here? I mean, this Sergei's a very solid player. I mean, if you if you know about Sergei, he, he was coined the Ministry of Defence, um, not because he had a job in the Russian defence, not that I know of anyway. Uh, I don't know, but I don't think he had a job working for Russian defence. It was actually because he when he played Magnus Carlsen, was so hard to break down. And he is a brilliant defender. So this kind of position, he's obviously good at every position. He's still got to win this position. It doesn't look that great for Black, but you could say these pawns are a little bit weak. And you can see Black's got his knight there tying that pawn down. And maybe A3 will become later on. So just the skeleton here, we were talking about skeleton. And this is, this is an interesting move. Can... Okay, so now if g5, I'm not sure how you're going to save this pawn, but maybe the knight will get trapped. The skeleton of the position is better for, um, is certainly better for black. And now the knight comes back. But why is holding this one? White is holding this one. The black, the white knight could come around to f5 here, which is a nice square for the knight. So actually r3, oh, look at this name. He's only in nm, r31415. I'm not saying that again. Um, seems to be holding his own here. So let's just keep an eye on this game as we go on. So hello to everyone in the chat. Um, so it's good to see some of you here. I know, you know, this is going to be going for the next three and a half hours. So it's only the start at the moment in time. Um, uh, I don't know who got your money on. Who have you got your money on to win it this week? Hikaru's always a good bet, isn't he? I mean, you know, if you're going to bet on anyone, Hikaru is one of those guys you, you probably want to bet on. I'm going to go for Jabava again, who was Exotic Princess, because last time I commentated um, on this competition, uh, Jabava, who you may have heard of, actually ended up winning it. So maybe I'm his lucky commentator charm. So I'm going to go for Jabava again. And I've just realized I've actually got my headphones on. But I'm not actually, you know, I'm not actually speaking to anyone. So that's also a little bit weird. But okay, now this position, White is doing a very good job, right, of holding this together. How? Um, but his time is a little bit low. His time is a little bit low here, and now he's pressurizing these pawns. And it looks like White's White's got a very good chance of not losing this one, because now this pawn is on pre. And if he moves it now, well, the knight on a, a4, it was looking good earlier, but White's got rid of his bad pawns. Remember, he had double pawns. He's got rid of that now. And the knight here, if anything, is not looking great. So Black, with this move, if he can get a rook to the back rank somehow, then that would be very painful for... Um, for Okay, this is a very clever idea. He's trying to bring the knight in. And now can he... Okay, he's going to have to move the knight. And now he's going to try and get the rook in like this. This is Sergei's one chance of winning this to create some mating ideas. But white is taking a lot of pawns here. So can he try this one? Okay, this is another idea. He's going here and check here. Can white defend this one? 
because White is now taking this. Oh, oh, he's just blundered. What was that? What was that? What was that? Did we actually just see that? Is Sergey Black here? Have I got the pieces right? Did Sergey Karyakin just blunder a whole rook? That is unbelievable. I think he did. I think Sergey, who's one of the best players in the world, blundered a whole rook. Unbelievable. And now he's going to lose. So this is an upset here. Unless he gets stalemated. Oh, come on. Is it okay? Well, let's mate next move. And he's mated. Can you believe that? Whoa. Well, I didn't I just didn't assume he'd blunder a rook like that. Did anyone else? Whoa. Whoa. Boom. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, young boy. So who is this is a major upset for this number, which I'm not gonna keep um keep like saying. So, sorry, I'm just going to his profile, and it doesn't say who he is. I'm going to come back very quickly from there. Uh, I sometimes, if I do move away from the board, it's basically to click and see what they what they are, um, you know, what's what their name is. <laughs> if I don't know it, I don't recognize that one. So, anyway, that's crazy, yeah? So, um, that I did ask for an upset, and that was certainly a big upset there. And if we just go back to see what happened there, I think it was one of those positions where Sergey just completely had a mind blank this has happened to me before but normally you know normally late at night when i'm streaming and in this position sergey has these three sort of pieces which are quite dangerously placed but white with the knight attacking that one seems to be defending well and black's best chance here would have been check king g1 give another check and then something like king here and now trying to play rook to f1 but I think White can now play this very clever move. Is this working? Maybe it's a better move. You can always take this pawn off. I'm just wondering if there's a better way to defend. But this is at least better than what happened because in the game, he played Rook to E1 straight away. So he just got his move order mixed up. And this is something, if you want to improve your own play, I always say to people, be very careful of your move order. When you're looking at tactics in a longer time, it's very hard to look at tactics in this time limit sometimes you can switch around your move order to to try and get the tactics to work but here it was it had the opposite effect um so science porn is saying ministry of offensive blunders he, he has he lost the title of ministry of defense has he i don't know oh he's a great player it's just a blunder it happens to everyone now i think we are in with round two so who are we going to look at now? And it's quick and fast today. Um, if there's anyone you particularly want to look at, we can go there. But I'm going to, I'm going to go to Peter Svidler. And the game started here with Black playing knight to a6. That is something very brave to do against Peter Svidler. And Peter Svidler consistently does well in this title Tuesday event. And here he's playing a very sensible opening. But look at what Black played. Let's just go back to that second move, knight to a6. Now, this used to be a favorite move of England's first ever grandmaster, Tony Miles. And uh, it's a very weird move. But if we catch up with the game now, after knight to c3, you can see that Peter's just bringing his pieces out in a very standard and normal way. Um, he has these two pawns, which control a lot of the central squares. Oh, blue doesn't really fit at the moment. But let's see. Oh, I love a bit of green. And there we go. A lovely bit of green there, like the like the fields of England, you know, or any fields, all the trees, a bit of green, lovely. And here, white's got a little bit more space. And I suppose Peter will try to swap off. Oh, he hasn't gone for that. I would thought he'd try to swap those ones off. But now black's going to try to get the bishop pair. But it's always nice having more space in the position and after queen d2 peter has that and in these positions generally i think you want to as white swap off that piece there i mean that's certainly what i would do if this knight now moves i would go bishop to this square um it's a nice simple move to play but actual fact if the knight goes back here you have ideas of g4 trapping that piece so black is in a bit of problems here because this knight has no good squares to go so g4 very interesting to try and trap this one, which would have to try and come into this square. Even something like, okay, he has played g4. And now knight here, is this bishop going to get trapped? 
I feel it might do maybe after queen c1, knight takes knight, queen takes, bishop e4, and then knight d2. This bishop is looking very bad. So I, yeah, he has played this. He's gone queen c1. I made myself a nice cup of coffee earlier, but I'm not going to have much time to drink it. So I'm just going to take a little bit, of, a little bit of a sip of coffee now. You know, just get that, that coffee flavor going through my veins. Ah, lovely, lovely. Um, hello, Ahmed. Okay, <laughs> so um, in the chat, I am having a look at the chat occasionally. So do do if you've got any. Um, if you have any questions you want to ask, or as a particular player, do do remind me to to have a look at that. Now, actually, I don't. I I personally don't like jumping games too much unless the position has been rectified because we want to kind of see what's going on in the game we're looking at. And I just want to see. Oh well, this is even stronger. This is the idea because now now you're attacking two pieces, and now Svidler is easily winning. He's just a piece up. Black has a little bit of pressure here, but against someone of Svidler's quality, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be anything. And this is very clever, getting rid of that knight. So Svidler's now going to win. So I think at this moment we can move over to another game. So um, where do we go? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, let's go to Juboff. We were I was mentioning Juboff earlier on, and Juboff is playing uh, John Nathan from Israel and. This position is looking quite interesting with Jubos King maybe in some danger, but with the queen possibly coming out to G4 later on, I, I don't think it's going to be in too much danger. Thank you, Chess Kid, for the raid. Um, I don't know if that was Master Mike. I haven't seen Master Mike for a while. Um, hello, Master Mike, if it is. The legend. The legend that is Master Mike. And now... Well, Black's still trying to attack. He's trying to get his rook here and go for the G2 square. So you've got to admire Black's strategy. One thing I think you should always do when you're playing higher rated players, there was this great chess book, um, probably my favorite ever chess book, um, and that was um, Chess for Tigers. Has anyone got this book in the chat? Chess for Tigers was written by the late Simon Webb of England, and it's a really fun book to read. If you if you have a if you have kids, you know you guys, and you want to teach your kid some chess, then Chess for Tigers. See if you can get it. I don't even know if you can buy it anymore. But what he talks about in the book, he basically I think it's um, called Catching the Lion or something like that, saying when you're playing a stronger player, should you change your style or not? Now, generally, you probably shouldn't change your style, but he recommends in that book that, and it looks like White's defending everything here, he recommends you should make the position much more complicated when you're playing a stronger player, because if you don't make it complicated, I think he calls it heffalump, catching the heffalump. If you don't make it complicated, your strong, the stronger player will probably outplay you. And this is a common mistake that a lot of people make when they're playing someone stronger, they get quite scared and they sort of get all timid and they dry up inside a little bit. And they think I'm playing the stronger player. I'm going to go really safe, exchange Slav, exchange French. And then they just lose. They basically get all the energy sucked out of them. They lose very slowly because they make little errors. It's better to lose in a blaze of glory, surely by going, ah, I'm coming at your King than to lose in, you know, in, in, uh, in very torturous way. So I always say it's good to go for your opponent. And at least Black is doing that. And he's got a little bit of pressure here. I mean, even though he's, what, two pawns down? And these pawns over here are completely useless. There is some pressure. White's defending everything with this knight at the moment. But how long can it last? Okay, the time situation is really bad. Black needs to find a very strong move. Okay, so he's moved this one to get out of the pin. And can he try to get his knight in somehow? I'm thinking knight d3 would be the move I would have played. Queen takes d3, rook takes g2. Knight d3, knight takes g2. Rook, uh, sorry, knight takes here. So maybe this one is interesting. Put knight d3 on the board. He's played it. He's played it. I'm just trying to distract one of the defenders away from g2. 
and which whichever one goes away we can try to take here so this is a really exciting position right i mean the black king is also exposed because of bishop e8 maybe bishop e8 is a strong move here is that a strong move bishop e8 he's played it i, I mean i'm predicting the moves i can't even believe it knight to f2 but now white can go queen takes and swap off all the pieces and this position is now very good for white because there's no attack against the black king and white has a major pawn advantage here and this is an easy, easily winning ending so um okay well we're hearing hikaru lost wow hikaru actually lost his game this one not so interesting um i feel as it's is an easy win but hikaru lost wow okay who did hikaru lose to we'll have a look in a second at the at the standings and stuff um see where Hikaru is. Uh, this one, as long as Jubov's getting a little bit of shorter time here, right? And now he has to be careful of this check. So we might just stick with this a little bit more. But of course, it's it's winning. The king is quite safe here. Well, this one is nearly checkmate, but nearly's not good enough. And now the king can come to h5. And it will come to h5, I think. Get off the dark squares. When you're when you're very short of time, you don't want to move your king onto the dark squares where you might get checked by the bishop. And do remember, oh, this is this is a very nice way to win. Get rid of one more piece, and now this check actually wins the piece. Uh even better, this checkmate wins the king. What's better than winning a piece? Winning the king. And this checkmate is actually. Apparently, just to let you know, if the king had gone here, rook here, checkmate. This checkmate has a name. It's called the Arabian checkmate with the knight and rook like this. Uh, and you can do it with the rook here, but the king has to be in the corner. And it's actually one of the little bit of chess history for you. It's one of the first ever recorded checkmates in the history of mankind. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it was written about or something, I don't know, years and years ago. And uh, it, so there you go. I don't know why I'm telling you a bit of chess history. So round two over there. And you can see the leaderboard. We have Fede Sev up there. Chess Warrior is Nordi Beck, this extremely strong junior. You've got all the big names really. Peter Fiddler's up there as well. Um, and well, it's a who's who's, isn't it, of strong players. But the big news really is Hikaru has lost. He's lost the game. So who else do we have? Ilyanov. Very strong Ukrainian player I've, I've actually played. I'm just going down a little bit. Is that Moskalenko? Another strong Russian player. And, um, well, we can just go down and down and down. Johan Willow is a player from England who does very well in these events always. And round three has now started. So let's go and see. I think we'll go with Fedosev. Fedosev, shall we? Yeah, let's go there. We'll see. Okay, now this position... Mm, well, it's it's not the most interesting to me, so I'm going to move on to another one. Uh, and we're going to go and look at Adriakin. And, okay, well, let, we haven't looked at Adriakin's games yet, so let's have a look at Adriakin. Adriakin is um, playing with white pieces. And Adriakin has, I don't know how many times he's won title Tuesday. It's a lot He's won this event loads of times, and he's playing Jumbo. I'm just going to click on his name to find out who Jumbo is. Probably, it's not Dumbo, is it? No, it's Jumbo. Rinit Jumbo Bayev. Rinit. And Rinit's actually a very dangerous player um, from Kazakhstan. So this could be quite interesting. And this opening, I think, occurred um, in... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, did Hikaru draw? I don't know how Hikaru got on, but he didn't win, clearly. So he, he must have dropped something. This is like the way that Black now plays this position to try and swap pieces and get this square. But Adriakin is a very tricky player. And Adriakin here is trying to go for some idea with F3 to move that knight away. This is probably this structure when you have this pawn and the two over here. And black has these pawns and the three over here is probably one of the most important structures you can get and 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 learn about. 
but Adriakin is not going for the normal idea. I say it's very important because the normal idea, which Karpov used to play all the time, I think it's Adriakin. Uh, I'm not going to click on his name again. You can find out who it is. Um, Karpov used to always try to put the pawn on B5 here. He used to castle kingside and play A4 and B5. You may have heard of that one. Uh, that is the minority attack. And the idea of trying to get your pawn here is you try to take this pawn, and if black recaptures, you basically get rid of the supporting pawn for c6. So black's left with that pawn there, and that pawn becomes a real target. Because at the moment, obviously, black is quite solid. But Adriakin's going for a much more aggressive strategy. Black's decided he wants to go the same castle the same side of him. And Adriakin is hoping, I think, to push with e4 at some stage. He's hoping to get this e4 move in at the right stage, this move here, just to play in the center of the board. Um, and then maybe he can try to move this one upwards. But why, why aren't they moving? What's going on? He's spending a long time thinking here, right? Okay, rook c1. He's he's not. There's no need to play this until you're convinced it's a good move because that's that strong. There's that strong idea that says the threat is stronger than the execution. So instead, Adriakin is playing with his pieces and he wants to get a knight here, and then maybe he's going to bring the queen over to try and attack the king. This is a very good square for the knight. Then look at those knights. Those knights looking very dangerous. So white's certainly better here. Let's just see how it plays out for a couple more moves, shall we? Coffee down. Coffee down. Okay. This, is, I think, is a good move. Black, Black's pieces are worse, so Black wants to try and exchange pieces off. So by playing bishop here, he's, he's, uh, he's aiming to exchange those off um, with the bishop on f5. Now, we did mention Hikaru earlier on. Of course, Hikaru has a massive following online, and I expect now I'm going to mention it, you're all going to disappear and watch him. So I'll just say goodbye, in you know, just in case. But there we can see Hikaru streaming. It would be a little bit weird if we streamed his stream here, and then someone else, and then you guys can stream our stream, and then someone else can stream their stream. So you could have someone streaming someone's stream of a stream streaming Hikaru. And then you can have someone streaming someone's stream of streaming their stream of streaming Hikaru's stream. And in the end, you've got a river because you've got so many streams. You've got a massive river there, haven't you? So, um, okay, that's enough. That's enough of Hikaru. Put, put him away. You can go and look at... How did he get such a... One thing I'm quite jealous of there is not just his chess skills, which are immense. His, his camera quality. What, what camera is Hikaru using? Can we find that out? I want his camera. The quality of his camera, you can even see, you can even see the individual hairs on his face. You can even see the individual hairs there. Look at it. If you look close enough, that's how good, that's how good the camera is. You can see each little, each little mark on his face. I think I can see a fly on the wall in the background. Um, that's incredible. Look at that fly. Is that a fly? Oh, no, it's a, it's a minute crack in the wall by his blinds. Um, what is his camera? Someone tell me what camera he's using. I'm very interested now. I need to get myself that camera, even though I don't know if you guys want to see my face that clearly. My face is a lot better when it's blurred. You know, it's, it's just trust me. Let's just keep it a bit blurred. Well, this game finished very nicely. Let's just have a look at the end of it. Adria King, well... Okay, he went g4, a capture on d3, and now he's got another rook coming in, and white's attack is certainly building up here. Pawn to b6, but now c6 is very weak. g5 now occurs. Interesting idea. That knight now moves back, and here is Adriakin's idea. He doesn't like going backwards. Boom! He dives into the position. Knight on C to D7. That is a very aggressive move. And that stops the queen from possibly coming over to defend. King to B7. 
And now the queen also prepares to increase the pressure. Knight to c4, trying to swap off some things. And look at this for a lovely, lovely little combination. He now sacrifices the rook. This is really, really clever because he's now, after rook a3, got four pieces attacking that lone king. And the big threat here is, of course, queen takes there, which is going to be checkmate. And now after a5, what is, what is the breakthrough? Knight takes b6. Boom. Put that in your pipe jumbo and smoke it. And um, yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this, is, this is a really, really powerful move, isn't it? Because if the king takes it, it's checkmate in two moves. And we take there, we go there, checkmate. So very nice game from Adrian Aking there. Okay, let's keep up with what's happening. Um, what round are we in now? We're still in round three. Let's see if we can find any of the other guys in the leading group here. Maybe this game is a game to watch. I'm just going to have a quick flick through. And can I find John Bart? Um, the quick answer to that is no. I guess you mean the Bartholomew monster. I can find Vinny the Pooh. I like that name. That's a good name. But we can't. Okay, let's let's have a look at the top one. Oh, no, there was one more above that one. We'll go there. Um, what is happening in this ending? This is very interesting. It looks like a draw. And this is um, one of the leaders. I okay, let's, okay, we'll see the end. It's a draw. Okay, interesting draw. That was Vladislav Artimev. Just, again, as I say, we have to look at the, look at the, uh, the names down again. And he only drew against another strong, even a FIDE master, but a strong FIDE master from Russia. Um, and there's still some games going on, but it's round three. I think there's a break after round four. And what they do, they, they have a little break on chess.com. They check for anyone who may be having outside interference, if you know what I mean. Um, they do very deep checks nowadays. I'm sure you're aware with you know stuff that's been going on. Uh, in general, of um, you know anyone who might be cheating the system, so that's another reason they have a break. But it's also nice; maybe people actually need to use the toilet as well. That's also a good reason to have a break, isn't it? I suppose. Um, so, not many games going on now. Let's see if we can update. It is three rounds in already, and I hope that didn't mess up everything by updating. Who is in the lead? Well, we have one of the youngest grandmasters ever, Nordy Beck. Oh, I've just did I just oh another player I wanted to have a look at actually um was Shearoff. I hear Shearoff's playing. He's one of my favorite players of all time, is Shearoff. So I don't know how he's getting on. Now, Jospem is I'm gonna have a look who this is. I think he's from Peru, Peru right? Um no, yes, Peru. And that is Jose Eduardo Martinez. Okay, another strong player who's very good at blitz. Liam Lee is up there. Parham, Prague. So Prague and Ananta. I don't know if I said that right. He's up there on three out of three. Strong player from Belarus. Sergei Zikalokko. And then we have Peter Svidler up there. Um, let's keep having a look at the guys on three points. All these people in the lead at the moment. Do remember, it's the top eight which go through to the knockout stage. It's a very big field. There's normally like 600 players playing. Um, so there's no, normally 600 players in this, all very strong players. I think the next round has started. So we now have a look at Nordy Beck, who is one of the... Real, he's a real talent. This guy, Nordy Beck. I don't know when he became grandmaster. Was he like the second youngest in the world? And he's playing against, and I'm just going to check out who this is from Hungary, Gabiz. Uh, excuse me while we look at his name, Gabar Nagy. So Nordy Beck is big favorite here with the rating difference, and he's now got what we call a Maroxi bind position. These two pawns here give white a bit of a bind on the situation um 
So, okay. Um, let's just get the evaluation bar back as well so you can see what's happening there. There we go. I'm very good at ruining things for our producer. Um, I, I, you know, I like to keep him on his toes. And this position, I, I always think this position is quite pleasant for White to play. This is a sort of middle game structure rather than an opening. And one thing I always say to people when they want to improve at chess is don't just concentrate on your openings. The openings are just a way to get into the game. A good opening course, book, anything you look at to improve your opening should tell you what you're trying to do in the middle game. So it shouldn't just be play this move, this move, this move, this move. A good opening thing should be like, right, the idea of this opening is to get this pawn structure, which is the Moroxy bind. Why do you get this pawn structure? Oh, another pawn comes up. So really playing on the light squares. You play this pawn structure to try and stop black from breaking out. So you're trying to suffocate him. And it's much harder to play when your pieces are suffocating. It's much easier to play when you have more space. You can do crazy things like this. And also when you have more space, you can aim to attack. And that's what white's doing. I mean, white's just pushing up the board, trying to, um, to attack. As Sam Copeland says as well, hello, Sam, a really good opening book. And I haven't seen many of these. This is like a dedicated author. Also tells you not just the opening is like the start of a story. You're introducing the characters but then it tells you a little bit, you get into the story and then the ending is what you're trying to do as well. I mean, it should tell you about the ending. A really good opening book will tell you about the ending. I don't know, even know if I've talked about endings in my opening books. Whoa. Yeah, go and check out Sam's channel. If you want to look at some really quality chess games, go and Google Sam Sam's YouTube channel, Sam Copeland there. Uh, he's got some brilliant games over there. Okay, back to the game. So Black has managed to break out and this is one move that Black wants to play, but White aims to stop. And if we go back to this position, White's kind of made some progress here, but Black's knight defends against the queen coming into that square. And White's just trying to charge. But really, in this kind of position, you want to sort of stop this break. I think White should have played A4 here. This would have been a much better move. Because if you can stop all the breaks, this is what you do in the Moroxy bind. Again, it's a, it's a restraining strategy. In the actual game, after f4, which is quite optimistic, black plays b5. This is a brilliant break. This is just the kind of break that black aims to play. Black's playing a hedgehog setup, like a coiled hedgehog. It springs free. And the point of this idea is after bishop a5, this knight is now attacked. And... Black gets a little bit of play over here on the queen side. Um, so um, this kind of this kind of play is is is, um, is it gives Black something to do. Let's put it that way. Um, this one pawn. Now that, that's the only thing I was wondering about. Can White take this pawn? Let's let's find out. It looks like White can to me. Um, I don't know how Black could have stopped that. And if you can take a pawn, you should do. Black's, you know, it's good for Black that this knight is here because otherwise White could be coming up with a queen coming in. But I don't know if this break, which looked very clever, has actually worked out, um, to be honest. Because how does Black follow this up? Can he break again with something like d5? Well, a couple more moves being played. He's taken on d2, and this position is on the board. And I don't really like the way this is going for Black. I don't think Black has enough compensation here. So Nordibek could be coming up to uh, maximum points here, four points. Remember, 10 rounds, the top eight players go through to the knockout stage. Um, so what should White do here after, well, whose moves? It's Black's move. And Black is taking a long time, apparently, to figure out the right move here. But I think White is just quite a safe pawn up, right? This pawn is okay. The White King... Is quite safe here. The only danger is if the black queen can get it behind the pawns, but I don't see how, how that is possible. So, okay, now do we have any more moves? It doesn't, oh, well, maybe I'm missing a lot. Let's have a look. Okay, let's see what it happens. So, we had some more exchanges. Black trying to break 
in the middle. This is a good idea. And now he does grab this pawn. Did white need to allow that? I'm not sure. Ooh, hang on a minute. What's happened here? I said I said this this must have been very good for white, but let's just have a look at that. Black plays this really good move here after rook takes. He goes pawn here. And I think white's next move is a major mistake because you don't want to allow this knight to come free. And by taking this pawn, the knight suddenly gets this freedom. And you need to try and defend this pawn, don't you? Something like rook d4. But instead, he allows the black knight to come here. And this is what I was saying about the queen getting behind. This could be an upset. The queen now comes into the position. It's threatening to take on g5. And queen and knight are very good at attacking together. King h2, knight h5. And the current position is here. And this is very, very dangerous to Nordibek. Queen and knight are coming into the position. And he's won another pawn now. Is black going to pull off an upset here? Can he play some tactic? Oh, he's just bringing his knight out. And look at those knights. Two knights and a queen attacking. This is, this is horrible. Even knight h5. But e5 could be better attacking there, defending a the knight. White, very short time. He's found a tactic. I think black should have actually moved the knight there in the position. Because now white can get some pressure. And he's attacking f7 in some lines. So maybe white is just about surviving. Keep an eye on the clock here to keep the pieces on the board maybe rook e8 now he's played it trying to come into e1 with a check the king moves away the knight comes in so the white king's still very exposed i think i'd rather be black here with that king so exposed and now look at it the black queen's got into the position he's got at least a draw can he try to win white only has three seconds left white's trying to win very brave play but now knight g4 is the threat white trying to swap the queens off I guess we keep the queens on. Good move. Check. And all of a sudden, White's managed to somehow... That was so brave. I've, I've seen Nordibek in the past do this before. And he's got bad positions and he's gone for the win. And he does win on time. Because the problem is if this knight moves, queen takes here. And, you, and I, I think all of a sudden, actually, White's doing very well here. So that was that was a very exciting, very exciting game there. Okay. Now, ha keep an eye on the score group there. We'll just see if there's any other games going on. Greg Shahid, or Shahad, did actually lose that one against Onschuk. So anything else here we can see? Let's have a look. Okay, well, a couple of games going on. This should be a draw. It's always funny watching the ones. Um, it should be a draw, obviously. But Black's a grandmaster. Well, they're both grandmasters, actually. Has anyone got the better chances here? This is actually a very easy draw because White's probably in a better position. But Black can always just give the rook up for the pawn. And then White will have to give this rook up for this pawn. So it's a draw. It's going to be a draw, this one. Quite clear there. And they're just repeating positions. Our newborn is uh, Bolligan, who's a bit of a legendary grandmaster there. Uh, ends in a draw. Um, and we'll see that game's ended. Oh, no, it hasn't. We go back there. And this is, well, I'm not sure why Black is playing on here. The computer says mate in eight, but uh, there we go. No need to play that position on anymore. And let's go back to the scores. Now, I'm not going to update it this time because it will annoy Bick and one of the worst things in the world is to annoy annoy your producer. You'll never get a job done again. You, you, you're watching. His eyes, he's like a hawk. I can't get away with anything here. You know, on the straight and narrow. That's me. And, um, well, we'll have a look at the score group. So there is a little bit of a break now. I don't know if the commentator gets a break, but maybe, maybe uh, Bit can tell me about that. Uh, and like I mentioned, they break after round four. And I think also they break after um, round seven. And that's to check the games, check for cheaters, um, to have a look at, uh, you know, if anything suspicious has gone on and just to check that everything's working okay, really, in general. So on four points, Nordy Beck on four. And you can see the list here. There's still a lot of people on four points. 
I like I like that name. Look, it's it's quite rare to see a grandmaster who, you know, is 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 humble. And if a grandmaster calls himself old weak GM, he I want him to win. I want the old weak GM to win. Peter's fiddlers up there, and you can see the list for yourself in the chess.com chat. Now I'm gonna take a very short break. Just grab myself a quick drink. And um, I'll be back in a minute. Don't go anywhere. There's six more rounds of the Open to go, and then it gets to the knockout stages. Exciting stuff. I'll see you in a minute.
Hello and welcome back to this Title Tuesday event. I, I really love this event so much when I'm not commentating on it for chess.com. I'm playing and commentating on my own channel. Probably safer I'm commentating here for you guys. Um, you know, I can not embarrass myself so much. But it's a great event and there's 10 rounds until the knockout stage. Let's just have a look at um, what the prizes are, for example, for... Uh, for today's competition. And it's a build-up, let's remember. It's a league kind of scoring system to get into the big event at the end. But the uh, first prize is $1,000. And you can see the other prizes, 500, 200. Top streamer. And I guess, I don't know how they vote for that. It, obviously, it should be me. I, should, I, I want that $100. So, you know, everyone vote for me. I want it. No, it'll probably go to the one who's got the biggest... Um, the biggest amount of uh, followers. So Hikaru probably picks it up all the time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really good event, but it, it's a league event. So the people who score well on a ongoing process, uh, the top four go through to the final, which is going to be one brilliant event. Um, hello to everyone in the chat. So I'm looking at twitch.tv chess the most. Hello, Kokareev. I remember you used to pop into my stream. Nice to see you here as well. And I uh, see another guy is streaming at the moment as well. And you may have heard of this chap somehow. Have you heard of this chap? He's also got a darn good camera. And look at the size of that king. Oh, my words. He must be at least an international master with a king that size. Anyone who's got a king in the background, that's guys. I mean, that would just scare me. I wonder if he use it to, uses it to beat, beat the, 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 you know, smash the heads of his dead opponents with that king. It looks like more like a weapon. It's like a proper training studio that John's got there. The board in the background, the king on the pile of books. I like it, John. You're looking good there, man. You're looking good there. And, of course, one of the nicest guys in chess and that is John Bar Folly And of course, he's streaming as well. So you can go and check out old John Bar Folly He is Mr. Nice Guy. And he's a lovely, lovely chap. Okay. Now let's move over to, I think we're going to have a look now at this game because it's my favorite name. And I, I want my favorite name to, to, to win. If he's, if he's, uh, maybe he's fallen asleep because he is very old. Oh dear. Has he fallen asleep? And this is Parham who's in qualification place against Old Wheat GM. I'm just going to check out who this is. And Old Wheat GM is Rodan Harze, who I believe was world champion. Is Parham going to lose on time here? What's happening? Where is Parham? Where is Parham? Parham's fa Maybe it's Parham who's fallen asleep. Let's just have a look at his time. Is he going to time out? Is he going to time out? This is crazy. He's playing an Old Wheat GM. He, he's big favorite to win this one and he's forgotten he's forgotten that the tournament started again we i know this is like maybe not maybe not you know the most riveting of games but he's is he going to make a comeback what do we reckon is he going to come back in time or not place your bets is he going to get back in the next one minute and 16 seconds anyone who says you know watching chess is like watching paint dry well, we are actually now watching an unmoving board, but hey ho, keep an eye on the clock. Is he gonna? Is he gonna come back? No, the player of black, like I say, is I think an ex world champion, a very talented player, been around in chess a lot. I don't think he's gonna come back in time. If he is, he's only gonna have thirty seconds. There's a famous story of Nigel Short playing in the uh, one of the qualifiers for the world championships, and he's playing a German GM. The German GM turned up with one minute on his clock against Nigel's like one hour or something, and a German GM blitzed out his moves and beat Nigel short. That must have been very, very embarrassing. I don't think he's good. I think he's literally, what is, what's happened? This is really surprising. I mean, maybe his internet has gone down. And even if he comes back now, I really want to see him come back with 10 seconds and win the game. That would be that would be insane, right? If he suddenly comes back, 10 seconds on his clock, come on, Parham, come on, come back. You've got 13 seconds, come on. Oh, no, we're going to move on. OK, so let's move on to another game. I just realized I just realized probably why he wasn't playing there. I'm so I'm so stupid at times. OK, um, let's have a look now at Nordibek. 
And Nordibek is playing here against Sergoy. And who's Sergoy? So Sergoy is a Russian Sergei Drygalov. Again, I haven't heard of this player. And this is a very interesting position there. Um, with C4 coming, it looks like a Nidor, very double edged position. And White's actually playing on this side of the board, and they both spent about a minute there. Um, so, what's happening here? What is happening here in this position? Um, well, it looks fairly even. We'll keep with this one for the typing. <laughs> and Chess Warrior must be one of the favorites. I think he's qualified many times before, and he must be. Uh, able to well okay he's got a great chance of qualifying for the main event and this is a typical break now he's trying to use his two pawns against the one pawn there and now with the d pawn trying to come through the board it's looking quite good for white white's piece is nicely positioned this does a great job the bishop on e4 here the bishop on e4 is blocked by the pawn on f3 and this stops these two bishops getting into the game. For example, if this bishop was elsewhere, just imagine it being somewhere else, black would have this break e4, and you can see if that pawn moves there, at least the bishop lines up against the king. So white must be doing well. Black now trying to complicate it, but white just centralizing his rook behind that pawn. And he's going to try to go d6 next at some point. Can he go d6 now? He can't now because this knight is dropping. And black's maneuver seems quite clever because at least he's put pressure on this square. White just captures on f5 there. And it might not be that bad for black because now black is getting an e pawn. He's got rid of that bishop, which was very, very dangerous. Um, very, very dangerous. Um, so it might not be that bad for black now. Interestingly, they've got about a minute left here in the game as well. Queen d3 played, so why not e4? He's gone for e4. And this pawn's coming to life a little bit. This is quite a dangerous pawn, right? Storming down the board like that. Maybe this knight can come back to f3 now to try and centralize. But first of all, he's just opened up the rook. So he's got an idea of the rook coming in to f3 in this position. Good move. That bishop was very strong all of a sudden. So white's aiming to swap off that bishop. And it's kind of a contest now between the two pawns. And I think black's done a great job of getting this pawn ready because he just has a very simple idea. So white has blockaded that pawn. I mean, my money is now on white because he's got a little bit extra time. This is a greedy move, but he needs to really get the knight back to dislodge the queen and then push the pawn. But what's white going to do here? What can white do? Of course, push the pawn. Past pawns should be pushed. And now he's pinned the knight. Interesting position. Very interesting position. This is a really strong knight all of a sudden. Really strong knight. Trapping the king, but also blocking the rook. So now the e-pawn is not so strong. Not so strong, this e-pawn in the position. So I think white's doing very well. And the time situation here as well does indicate that black attempting to get that rook good but you have to now consider moves like rook c7 and just d7 instead he's kept it safe does he have a little check here that probably doesn't do anything there's some nail nearly tactics so he's going straight into black's position with the rook and this might this might now be a winning idea right so just move the rook and when the queen moves wait well, can't move because of knight g6, that's a, oh no, queen e6 only move, right? This one now met by, this queen takes g6, because you've got this idea of ganging up against that one rook there, so all you need to do is move the knight out the way, but that's also a pretty good move there, coming through, and Nordibek is playing so well, right? Look at this move, fantastic move, the back rank is so weak, and now rook takes d8, will just win the game. Brilliant play by Nordibek, absolutely brilliant. And he's gone on to get to five out of five. We will have a look at other players who are on five out of five. We'll have Jeffrey Zong. I didn't realize he was playing. Jeffrey, incredibly strong player. He's one of the players I've been most impressed with, I have to say. Really, really impressed with him. And another player who I believe is playing, I'm going to see if I can find his board. It looks like he's still playing. And we can see him streaming. One of the nicest guys in chess. 
and I really, really do appreciate this guy. And we have there the legendary Peter Fiddler. He's one of the most humble guys in chess. This is a drawn position. If you keep the knight and the king close to each other, you should be able to draw it. It's when the knight drifts away that you're in danger. It should be a draw. But can Peter? Oh, he's. Oh, look at that. He's a complete sportsman. Rather than try to flag his opponent or try to do something, he takes the draw by just capturing the knight off. He could have played that on. That's how much of a gentleman Peter is. And Peter Svidler, I think, has been eight times Russian champion. So we know, you know, if you're eight times Russian champion, you're blooming good, right? Now, okay, who else is on five points? Let's just go and have a look now. Well, we have Liam Lee. Liam Le Kong is there. And he always does well in this competition. We have a we have a candidate master from South Africa, Keith on Sky. Well, he's he's certainly flying high. Let's have a look who this chap is, shall we? Keith on Sky, Keith, Keith. There, we call him Keith, shall we? I I haven't heard of Keith before, but he's having a fantastic tournament at the moment. Is old Keithy boy up there on five out of five? Um, so. Uh, but I think one of my, okay, I, I think this is going to be very interesting. I'm, we're halfway through the competition or the first stage of the competition at the moment. And the top eight players go through to the knockout. I think Jeffrey, I was talking about how impressed I've been with Jeffrey's play. Uh, I, I was really impressed when he played Magnus Carlsen in a competition online one because he, he was one of the only players, it seemed to me, who was causing problems for Magnus at certain stages in the games. And that is really impressive, really, really impressive just to be able to do that. He's got a bright, bright future, does Jeffrey. And I hope he qualifies for this one. Nordy Beck, always impressive. And let's see what other big names we have on four and a half. I expect the qualifying score will eight and a half points. You'll definitely qualify normally. I'd say definitely normally. I'm a little bit more doubtful now. Eight points might qualify. So... These guys on five out of five, if they get three and a half out of the next five, that's the score they should really be aiming for, even though the best way to play is just to try and win each game. Another player who is a legend in chess is the Shaq. And I didn't even realize he was up there. Shaq, in, we can see here in 10th place, well, you might be able to see his name at the side. He just says A-Z-E -A -Z -E, is uh, Shaq... Mamajarov, Mamajarov, who was actually world number two, I believe, on rating about four years ago. So he's a very dangerous player. Be good to see him qualify, get back up there. Uh, but it looks like the games have started. So we are going to go for, let's have a look at Jeffrey's game against Keith. So Keith from, this is, this is like David and Goliath, right? We have David. With the white pieces, Keith, just a candidate master against Jeffrey, a really strong player. They're banging out the moves here. Black has sacrificed the pawn, and he's going to get his knight into this square. But white is a pawn up. He's got this safe extra pawn. So this is why the evaluation bar is going to like Keith's position. But this is kind of a standard position here. It's a standard sacrificial idea. And this knight now tries to come along but okay he's going to try and oh he's given up the exchange he's given up the exchange that is quite surprising there and now black must be doing okay i don't believe the evaluation bar which says white is better here still white just gave up the rook on a1 so he's really going to need to do a massive david versus goliath job here massive Hello, Jess, in the chat. Good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. And now, whoa, this is a weird move. That is a grandmaster move. That's a, a move that only grandmasters can get away with. If a normal human being played a move like that, you just assume they were stupid. But if a grandmaster plays it, you're like, oh, that's really clever, even though I don't know why he's played it. I guess it's because he wants to get his queen in the position and... The bishop was stopping that. The one good thing about White's position is this bishop does have a very good blockading effect. It stops Black getting his pieces into the game. And now White is trying to make progress in the center of the board. So even though White's kind of lost his rook there, this might not be so bad for White because all of a sudden the knight's coming in. 
He's got D6 coming and he's getting some kind of attack here. This is not so stupid. Could we be seeing another upset? What move do we play here then? F5 is the move that I would play. This is a very human move. If the pawn captures that one, your knight is going to try to go to G3 and to F5. And if you can get your knight to F5, you've got a great attack against the king. So this is a very aggressive move here. F5. And I like Q's position. This is this is outstanding play from Keith. Keith on sky. Can we just say Keith flying high at the moment? He's on. Can he get to six out of six against extremely strong player Jeffrey? Can it happen? Okay. Well, now Jeffrey is trying to get his knight somehow into the game. F six immediately. He didn't even think about this move. And look at that. He's pushing the pawn straight up the board. This is fantastic play. Maybe he can even get the bishop here to put pressure on f6 here. Something like bishop h4. Okay, he's just grabbed the pawn. He's threatening the knight. I think white is doing very well, well here. The knight's come in. Now we're threatening f7. Black's position is collapsing. If he defends f7, we take the knight. So the knight has to go here, only move. And now we can even think about sacrifices like this. Brilliant play from white so far. So I'm just wondering if this move works. King takes and then rook d6. Is that one idea? Another thing you can do, look at this. Bishop b4, knight takes here, king takes, queen takes e6, king takes, bishop c4, king f5. And you're very, oh, does this work? Knight takes f7. Does this work? Knight takes f7. I'm trying to make this queen sacrifice work. He doesn't think it does work. So he's coming back and he's just trying to exchange bishops. Very interesting game, yeah? Very interesting game. The bishops may be exchanged. They do come off the board. And now you can even consider this one. Of course, this is the right way to play. He's given up two exchanges, two exchanges, but he's got pressure here against f6. This is really very fascinating game. Very fascinating game. Um, to play so well against a strong player like Jeffrey. And I think Jeffrey is... He's defended amazingly up to this point in time. But is White's idea to do this kind of stuff? H4 and G5, maybe. Okay, so that's a very exciting game, that one. Let's move over to another one. And we can have a look at Nordibek's game. And Nordibek here has the black pieces. And he has got the queen for bishop and rook. So it's much better to have the queen, you'd imagine, in this structure. But white now has ideas of bishop g7 and rook f8 coming in to the structure. Um, so, for example, you can't go bishop g7 at the moment because of rook e1. Rook e1. Um, and so can we now go... Well, we're now threatening to go bishop g7 and rook to f8. This is another idea that's going to hopefully occur quite exciting game here how do you stop this bishop g7 this is a really nasty threat um good try you've got to try to dislodge that rook the other idea was for this one and this one to come through so g5 played and you've got to think of a good square for the rook maybe just rook f5 who is becker i'm just going to have a look who becker is of the white pieces there we know who naughty beck is one of the most talented players around i think he became a grandmaster at like I don't know, basically when he was he was still breastfeeding. Alexandra Injek from Belgrade. I've heard the name actually. I'm better I'm better at hearing it than pronouncing it. Um and he's just trying to work out. They're getting both getting very short of time. Okay, this is a good move. And now just rook g3, right? Trying to oh no, because then you take okay, brilliant move. Rook f8 is the threat. So you can't take the rook because of rook to f8 checkmate. You have to go. You have to play rook here. But now rook e3. And if rook takes rook, rook to f8 checkmate. And if the rook moves away, we can try... How are we going to do this? Move our rook like this, trying to get our rook in. Maybe just like this. Rook here, rook here, rook f8. I think black is losing. He has to try this, but now rook e4. Okay, the same idea. Rook f6, rook f8. Um is what he's trying to do. And now just rook f6. 
a desperate try here, but now Pawn takes and Black is losing because this is checkmate. Brilliant game there. Brilliant game there for, was it Alexander of, um, I think, Croatia. Let me just check where he's from. Belgrade, sorry. Very nice win against Nordibek. Um at the end. I mean, his, his position may have not been fantastic, but he, he, he certainly did well to pull it around. Um, and that is now round six. We're over halfway through the tournament and we're just going to have a quick, well, you can see always the leaderboard and there's three people. So Jeffrey did win that game. Well done for Jeffrey. Uh, he defended brilliantly to get to six out of six. I'm glad to see that. I want to see him in the knockout stages. I, I really enjoy watching his play. Liam Likong is also on six out of six. And the player we just saw there, Mamajarov, is um, also up there. Mamajarov is as a Ray Chess. Old Week GM was on five and a half. And Peter Svidler's on five and a half. So we've got a really good mix of strong players at the top this time. Uh, any games going on we can see? Well, maybe this one is still happening. And these are two players who can also get to the five and a half group. Now, let's remember, I think eight and a half is the score that players want to get to to qualify. Eight and a half. And it looks now that Black is going to win this game because that pawn, yeah, he has to give up his piece for it. So Black is clearly just um, a piece up here and doing well. Um. He's always going to win this position with one second of move added on. I say always. He's probably going to stalemate now because he's also got two pawns advantage. Now he's got one pawn advantage as soon as I said that. Uh, so you still got to break through the shield of this one, right? This rook is shielding. You've got to get your king into the position. It's not so easy because the rook shields the king from advancing. So I think the way to do it is just to push your C-pawn. So at some point, now push your C-pawn. And that's what he does. And here, maybe if you can ever get checked, move the king there. This is a clever move. Maybe the bishop is coming here, but the king is now coming this way, right? He's making a lot of progress. You can simply take that one, and it's an easy win. Um... Okay, well, if I can find Prague's game, it's quite hard, I'm afraid, to find a game which um, uh, I will try to find it that's finished. I'm not aware how I do that. I'm only, I've only got the games which are live, which are easy to find. I'd like to have seen uh, Prague's game there. Uh, Prague, obviously, this extremely talented junior um, from India. Um, and, well, they can... Okay, come on, guys. Agree a draw here. You know, I think an international master will know how to draw this. It's 112 moves already. 112 moves. Oh, come on. Just agree a draw. Don't you just hate it when they play until the death? You know, when it's an easy draw. Come on. 121 moves. Okay, here's a question for the producers. I don't know if they got the stats for this. I'd love to know this one. I'd love to know this one, but... What do we think is the longest ever game played on chess.com? How many moves do we think it is? What do we think it is the longest ever game played on chess.com? I'm very interested to uh, to know that one. How many moves? Do you think anyone's got over 200 moves? I think definitely over 200 moves. I would say probably the longest game on chess.com is like 250 moves. Is that right? It's an interesting question. I wonder if someone can... Help us out with that question in the chat. I'll be really excited to, to know the answer to that one. Um, what is the longest game on chess.com? They, there was this amazing YouTube video. I can't, I can't actually remember. We're going to have a look at Jeffrey against Liam Lee. This is a big matchup. There's this amazing YouTube video where someone worked out the longest possible game of chess. I think it was like over, I think it was something like 5,000 moves because obviously you have to avoid the 50 move rule. You have to avoid stuff like stalemate, having a position which is no mating material. And obviously, you have to change, make a pawn move every like 50 moves. So this guy did a video on it, which I thought was brilliant. Um, I don't know if anyone's got that information. The longest ever possible game of chess. Another interesting uh, sort of fact. I think it worked out. Some mathematician worked it out. But I mean, I always doubt them. Is that actually true? Can we make it longer? 
someone's saying 5,860. Okay, well, let's go back to the game. Now, a very solid position here. Now, let's be honest. A draw is an okay result. Because remember, the winning score is eight and a half. Um, I believe it's round seven now. So they've got four games to go. So if these guys get a draw against each other, they're probably two of the strongest, two of the strongest blitz players in the whole tournament, then that wouldn't be a bad result. But if anything, I do prefer White's position. Why do I prefer White's position? Because obviously the computer doesn't. Because of the C file. And with the idea of going bishop c6, white is just trying to grab that square for the rook. And he can play like king e2, rook here, and increase the pressure on, on the c file. Now, um, after the move c6, which I think is forced, because otherwise you're going to lose control of that square, black can now try and get rid of that weakness by breaking with c5 and capturing with a rook on that square. Because otherwise, white can increase the pressure. Rook c1, knight here. Thank you for posting the link there. There you go, guys. You can obviously move away from my commentary. Bye. Just save it. Save it for later. And that is the video link to the that shows maybe the longest possible game of chess. Really interesting video. Now, another streamer, one of the streamers I'm most impressed with, and we'll just have a look at his stream now, is the famous Penguin. I mean, Penguin is just a legend. I mean, he's the quickest draw in the West, isn't he? He pulls that gun out and shoots it so, so quickly. He really is an amazing player. And you can see him there. I'm just going to let you watch him for a second while I have some of my water. And another brilliant talent. I think the thing with Penguin is if he decided to work hard on his chest, study a bit more, not play so much online, he would be an incredible offline player. And I hope he does that at some uh, some point. And yeah, the funny thing about Penguin, I mean, yeah, this is like, as Sam has pointed out, and my producer, look how many tabs he has open. What a lunatic. What, what a lunatic. How, someone count them. Someone count how many tabs he has open there. <laughs> that is insane have a count someone please count them come on how many tabs look at that yeah is that what what a lunatic what's he looking at what are those tabs does he not know how to close things down he's an absolute lunatic i mean maybe in between moves he's you know having a look at the latest news on um i don't know some channel and then he's moving over and he's think okay what's the weather like in germany and then he's looking at, oh, what, what takeaway can I get later? I'll go there. And he's like, I mean, look at how many, what an insane guy. He's got like 50. I mean, how can his computer even run with so many tabs open? <laughs> My computer would just go, and it would literally just die. It would be like, close, close, close that memory down. He must have one of the best computers in the world. We've caught him out there. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely madness. Too much Reddit, someone's saying. And by the way, back to the position here. Black is holding it quite well because he has a blockade on the C pawn here, which is White's one attempt at winning this position if that pawn can go. And now Black has won a pawn, but White's idea is to take, maybe move the bishop here, get rid of the blockading pieces of the C pawn and push this one. So I still say it's Black who's in a bit more danger here. I once, uh, I once saw a stream. I won't go into details too much because I'll probably get in trouble. I'm very good at getting into trouble. But I saw someone who was streaming um, chess, and uh, he, he, he had a lot of people watching at this time. He didn't normally have so many viewers, but he suddenly picked up, I don't know what it was, a big raid. He had over you know thousands of people watching, and um, he wasn't very good with his history. And, uh, well, he, he typed something into, into the bar, just typing something. And let's just say it probably came up with something he'd rather not share with, with uh, all the thousand viewers. Um, you know, some, some predicted searches came up and it was, <laughs> and everyone was like, what was that? What was that that just came up in the bar? Because obviously if you type in the bar at the top, it will come up with maybe your most view, viewed pages. So just a word of warning there, a word of warning. Be very careful. And uh, people are like, people obviously 
screen captured it and everything, much to his embarrassment. Well, that has ended in a draw. Uh, Jeffrey offered a draw. Um, it's it's fair enough here. Okay, well, I, I, it's it is equal. I, I thought I thought Jeffrey was a pawn down, but I just realised he's not, and he's got Black's got this blockade on the pawn. There's not too much going on. That's a solid, solid draw, solid draw. Um, so has anyone got to maximum points? Now, the only person who can is the who goes by the name Becker. So we're going to go straight there. And if Black can win this one, it'll be the only player on maximum who was uh, Alexandra of Belgrade. But it does look like Black is losing here. White's king is super safe, and there's just too many problems here. This pawn, the back rank, the pawn on g6 creates checkmate ideas. The only threat there was queen to this square check, which is not going to work. Um, and this is this is easily winning. Two pawns up as well. White's piece is so well placed here. White grabs another pawn, and now these guys can sort of come forwards at will, but this is... This is horrible for, for, for Black. There we go. And Black can resign here. It's a safe way to do it. There we go. Okay, so no one is on maximum points after, I can't even remember what rounds we are. We've got three rounds left. I'm not sure if there's a small break uh, at this moment in time, but there's only three players on six and a half. Um, we have um, Alexandra and Peter Svidler. On six, along with players like Nordibek, uh, Moskalenko, some other famous names, a lot of Russian and American players sort of floating around the top there, uh, on six points uh, as we go. I think they do now do another check for any cheating that's going on. So it'd be interesting to see if anyone gets thrown out of the competition now. We obviously can't comment on that too much here because I'll get myself in trouble. But yeah, yeah. Um, is, is worth keeping an eye on that. I'm just finding out if we do have a little break while things go. Um, now, let's just have a look. Other scores, people we recognise. Well, you have to get to the top eight. So even if you're on five and a half, if you win your last three games, like any of these guys here, then you will get into the top eight. Most likely, most likely you get into the top eight. But I think we are having a quick break now. So um, we're just going to call the break in just for a couple of minutes and then we're going to be back with the last three rounds and then the knockout stages of the competition. So I'll be back soon. See you then.
Hello, everyone. And there's only three more games to go. Uh, they have a little break after rounds four and seven. That's because uh, the clever minds at chess.com and everything else, they can check for any, uh, let's say, unfair play and anything else and to just uh, give everyone else who's playing a break in the competition. After three more rounds, we're also going to see the knockout stage, which is where it gets, well, it's pretty exciting at the moment, but this is the format that you can see at the competition. And the knockout stage occurs, we're on round seven, round seven is gone. Um, and after round 10, they have a little bit of a break and it goes to the top eight players play a knockout competition. It's great fun. I love commentating on this last time. Um, there was obviously a quarterfinal, semifinal and final. It's one game in the quarterfinals of the same time limit, or was three plus one. But then the sudden death is so exciting. One minute of bullet chess. The semifinals and finals, it's a two-game match. And then we will lead to having one winner. So it's going to be really, really exciting. It gets more exciting by the minute, this event, as we go on. And there's going to be so much to look forward to at the end. So, uh, yeah, I'm exciting. So you can see now the list of players there. And if we took the top eight now... Well, you can see who would go through. Jeffrey would go through. And all these guys, Mamajarov would go through. Sort of some of the names I, you know, they're, they're all fantastic players. Peter Svidler on six out of seven at the moment. I I think the, the the qualification score eight and a half is pretty much guaranteed. So if you get to eight and a half, so you're going to be definitely, even it depends on tie break normally if you get to eight. And they work out tie break generally on who's played the stronger players which I think is quite fair. Now let's just have a look down. We'll go down, down, down and see some of the other names. Um, I want to really, I'm looking out for Exotic Princess, who is, uh, uh, that just sounds weird when I say that. <laughs> I hope no one's listening outside. You know, I'm looking, I'm trying to find Exotic Princess. Imagine if you said that in like a, a work office when you're at your computer, you, you're there and you're looking around. I, I'm just trying to find Exotic Princess. Uh, it doesn't sound right. Exotic Princess is actually Jabava. That's his handle. I'm not on some one of those sites, just to let you know. And where is where is Exotic Princess? Does he have any chance of qualifying? He's not doing great this week. Well, five and a half is still a chance. So Jube off there, five and a half. And I can't see him at the moment. Uh, no, I can't see him. So someone can maybe update us how, how he's getting on there. Um, as we see. Um, now, obviously, you guys can check check who's in the tournament yourself by going onto the chess.com server. And like I mentioned before, one of the reasons of this break is to check for any untold, un unfair play. As, as I'm sure chess.com is really serious on catching cheaters, keeping competition fair. And I think they're the best in the business, to be honest at it. Um, Obviously, Lee Chess, very good as well. But Chess.com spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources on their ways of catching people who might be using computers. Basically, that's what they're looking for in whatever way they are. They they have a team of people looking out for this. They have programs, algorithms. And, you know, um, it's obviously fair play is a very, very important thing to, to bear in mind. Uh, extremely important. But the games have started and... I'm going to go over to this game between Mamajarov, who is a legendary chess player, and this very strong player from Peru. So let's just go through the opening moves. Mamajarov with the white pieces. Mamajarov is on six and a half, and it is now a Nimzu Indian. So it's always nice showing the opening moves. Mamajarov has the advantage of the white pieces, and he's playing quite solidly in this position. After queen d8, he goes a3. And now bishop takes f3. Black has a square as well. Black has the d4 square, the square there. Um, I mean, cheating is so important. I mean, it's such a big thing online. I mean, but the one thing I would say is you will get caught. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, every, I mean, there's so many cheats have been caught, and you can see by some of Danny Wrench's videos, he did a famous video on it. Oh, boo. Ooh, we didn't want to see a draw there, did we? But okay, they're trying to they're trying to 
ease their way into the final, which is which is good. And um, a lot of people I saw complaining that, oh, chess.com has so many cheats, but that's not really an argument, isn't it? That's like saying, oh, prisons have so many prisoners. Uh, you can't really blame it on the prison, can you? Oh, that prison. It's the prison's fault. It's got so many prisoners. Let, let's let's the prison is terrible because it's got so many prisoners in it. That's kind of you know you can't blame it on the prison. You can blame it on the prisoners, the cheaters. I mean, I think there is an argument that cheaters should be named and shamed personally um, when they've. And I think that's something we're going to see more of to deter them from ruining everyone else's fun. Okay, now on to another game. And um, before we go there, there's another streamer. We, we would like to mention who, who streams a lot, streams Title Tuesday, and it is Kampski, another very famous chess player there. Now, I've played a couple of times in these uh, in these events, and Kampski there seems to be playing in a very nice wooden structure. I do like a bit of a bit of wood. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. Thanks. No, I love, I mean, look at that. It's very traditional. It looks like a very traditional house. And uh, that looks nice. Not a modern one. I prefer traditional houses. And Kamsky is a bit of a legend, isn't he? What was he, what, what, what did they call him? They called him, I am a, what was the word again? Can anyone remind me? I I am a something legend. I can't remember what he said now. I can't remember. I can't remember the exact words. Maybe some of you guys can. Probably best not to type it. But he is. He's been one of the best chess players for a long period of time in the world, being one of the world's leading players. And it's great to see so many of these guys actually um, up there and performing and streaming at the same time. So thank you, Kamsky, for showing, sharing your games with us. Um, so back to this game. Now, Jeffrey is not the kind of player to take quick draws like those other two guys who are trying to ease their way into the final. I always think people like that I kind of, you know, who want to draw their way into the final. It's not a bad strategy, but I'd never use that. I think you just have to play. As soon as you get in that mentality, oh, a draw is a good result, it will affect your play. Jeffrey's not that kind of player. And we now see him here against Sergei, Sergei with the from Belarus being a pawn up. He is a pawn up. He's this D pawn up here. So that must give him some chances. It is opposite cut of bishops, meaning more draws are um likely but now what is this move what is this move queen takes there queen takes e4 look at that weird tactic that confused me so if you take here i go queen takes e4 and i have this well i've won the exchange so you can't do that one so what he's played he's played rook b4 instead and now he is threatening to take the knight so the knight has to come back so it's more of an artificial idea than actually a proper idea um and definitely jeffrey is pushing for a win here okay what's happening now lots of moves are coming quickly lots of captures he's still got this extra pawn in the position so jeffrey is doing well and if he wins this he's going to be he must have guaranteed qualification surely he must have guaranteed some kind of qualification in the position um so can he do it Look at White's time. I didn't even look at White's time. He's got seven seconds left. Surely he can't do it with second, seven seconds left. It's impossible, right? It's not possible. And he has won. Well done, Jeffrey. And he won with the black pieces, which is hard to do. So now he's in a great situation, and he should be well on his way to qualifying. Is he leading the tournament? I think he probably... Let's have a look uh, at the score group, if we can. He is. He's leading the tournament, seven and a half. And you can see now why eight and a half points is a score that's going to, you know, make you qualify. But it looks like eight points might qualify this 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 year round. What do you guys think? Will eight points qualify at the same time? I don't know. Other players at the top. Well, we do have the two guys who had a draw. I think they're still going to win. need to win one game out of their last two, maybe two draws. We'll get them through, but surely they can't guarantee, you know, try to rely on two draws. But there's still lots of games going on. Let's have a try to find Liam Lequong's game and see how that one is going. So, well, Liam Lequong is in trouble here. You do not often see Liam in trouble. And he's in trouble because White is a pawn up. But these pawns are fantastic. 
they are controlling all of these squares. And Black's only idea now is to push this. But how is he going to stop that pawn? And at Queens would check, Liam Lequong is going to resign. We're just going to check out the player. Oh, he's okay. Last trick here, but then d6. And d6 blocks the bishop. And obviously, he can resign now. Let's just see who that was. So Liam Lequong is now in a lot of trouble in his qualifi qualifying. We've got um, Matthias Bluebomb was the player. So great result there for Matthias. I actually remember... I think Danny Wrench beat, beat Liam Lequong in one title Tuesday, which, I mean, no one ever imagined in four million years. Danny Wrench beating Liam Lequong. That was that was the biggest news of the year. Biggest news of the year. Apparently, Blue Bum... Did I say Blue Bum? <laughs> um, let's just call him Mateus. Uh, was the finalist last week. I don't know if he has a blue bottom. And um, he's a, a very very strong junior from Germany. Very strong. I mean, look at his rating. I mean, he's he's up there, of course, with Liam Lequong. Nearly 3,000. So he's a very, very good player. There's no doubt about that. Um, okay, so round 9 and 10 will be coming up soon. Now, Parham did miss one round, but does he still have a chance? He's he's he. Let's have a look how many points he's on. He's on five points, so I don't think he does have a chance even if he wins three games, six, seven, eight, his tie break's going to be so bad. I don't think Palmham's going to qualify this time, but it might well help his score generally. It might help his score in the overall league. Because remember, every time the more points you get each week, the higher up in the league you get and the better chance you get of qualifying for the super event. Now, this position should, of course, be a draw. Because as soon as white plays g6, you take that pawn. And that is the idea of black's plays. Just got to be able to play this one. Now, how can white try to win this one? The only way white can win is by trying to put his knight on this square. But now the king is in front of the pawn. It's a very easy draw. Very easy draw. So I would have thought this will get to the 50 move rule. Or Parham will just agree a draw, realizing there's no point trying trying to win this one because this bishop is just so strong it just stops that pawn from going i don't even know what parham's trying to do now uh if there's only way yeah it's a draw okay which is understandable there so no way you can win that position impossible impossible um now going back to the score group just seeing who we are there's lots of people on that seven out of eight they're all in with a great chance six and a half out of eight is still pretty good, yeah? Because But you have to win both your games to guarantee a place. I'm just trying to work out who's got a chance. Now, who else do we have in the group? Young Kid. Let's have a look who Young Kid is. Is Maruli and Young Kid. Again, there's so many up-and-coming Indian players. It's very hard to keep, keep track of them all. They've just got great chess culture and history. It's really, you know, really impressive. One of the best chess cultures. It's really seemed as a great and a very popular sport over there in India, which is fantastic. I mean the boom in um the boom in 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 basically in in Indian chess has been massive over the last couple of months. You can see that by the amount of streamers from India who are bringing in massive audiences. Uh, so it's great to see that. Maybe after they came first equal in the Olympiad. But Jeffrey Zhong is in first, and he's going to have to play now, and he is playing. They're off. Jeffrey Zhong is playing against um, Blue Boom. Um, <laughs> Mateus. Let's just say Mateus. And he's playing the same opening he had before. And let's remember, a draw now is, is really not bad, because even if you draw and lose the next game, this this in this position with two games to go, I, I would be tempted to have a draw, because if you draw here, lose the next game, you might even qualify. Two draws guaranteed to qualify. Um, but Jeffrey's not the kind of guy who wants to take a draw. And who's better in this position? Even if the computer says 0 0.00, it must be white who's better because black has these pawn weaknesses. And this is the same position he played earlier. But black is still very solid. But maybe this pawn will become weak later on because it's on its own. It can be, you know, if a rook ever comes around, you can't play a move like h6, which if you had a pawn on uh, g7, you'd be able to play. If you had a pawn on g7, you'd be able to play h6 and you'd be able to defend it. 
But in this position, you can't. And also, White's knight is a little bit more active. Um, Black has to go on the defensive here. So White is a little bit better here. Can Jeffrey pull this into a win? Um, another streamer from Brazil who uh, is a very aggressive player, even more of an aggressive player than me generally, which is very hard to do, is this chap here, Alexander Fear. Another guy really worth checking out. I don't know if he streams in Portuguese or if he streams in English. Can we get the sound on? I don't know if we can get the sound on. You can see it set up there. Well, I can't hear. Maybe you guys can hear if he, if he does um, stream in Portuguese. But he's a, he's a really good one to watch because of his aggressive, because of his aggressive style. And I I, I think I find watching different streamers is quite exciting because some streamers play very solidly and don't take many risks. Other streamers are complete lunatics. So you can kind of find a streamer who suits your viewing pleasure more or maybe your style and another thing you should do really if you're a very aggressive player maybe try to find a positional player to try and learn some positional tricks from and if you're a really positional player have a look at an aggressive player stream so you can try to learn something try to improve your weaknesses now back to the game here and i have to say jeffrey is making very good progress like i mentioned before this pawn here on h7 the Harry Bow pawn, and we all like picking a Harry Bow. Nice bit of Harry Bow. I don't know if you get, do you get Harry Bows in America? Probably. This pawn here is quite weak. So if we ever get the knight now to F6, we're going to win that pawn. And then we, we're a pawn up. And the easiest endings to win are king and pawn endings, nothing else on the board when you're a pawn up, or knight endings. So when you've got a knight and there's no other pieces on the board and you're a pawn up. There's less tricks in the position. There's less chances for your opponent to create counterplay. So that is one idea White has, but I'm not sure how he's going to get his knight there because another little bit of, another very easy way to improve is to work out or know how many moves it takes to get your knight to certain squares. And when it's in the diagonal structure, it takes, well, one, two, three, four moves to get there. Oh, he's agreed a draw. Okay, well, that's a little little bit disappointing, but maybe it is a draw. Maybe Black's just going to go knight c6 here. And then the Black Knight gets active. And you can't play this plan. I mean, you could still try to win this white. You could even go this way and come around like here. But I think the point is, Jeffrey's like, okay, a draw is a good result. It should help me qualify. And it's the final eight which are going to go through. I mean, I think... White can certainly play on here, but maybe Black's also got some counterplay with the King maybe coming this way. And these pawns could be a little bit weak in some situations. Black can try to block them off. So, of course, it is a draw. It is a draw, of course. Um, so, the score group. These two guys have finished their games already, and they're eight out of nine. They just need a draw on the last round. Um, other top games going on. Well, we haven't looked a lot at Fedosev. And in this position, Jospem from Peru is doing extremely well. I mean, he, I mean, just in the tournament, he's doing extremely well. But what about this position? I think he's also doing well in the position. This would be a very big sculpt because Fedosev, the player, the young Russian player, I say young, is 25 young anymore? Is that is that young in the chess world? It's probably not even that young. It's maybe maybe you're an old man if you're 25, maybe. But this knight, how do you defend the knight on b4? I'm not sure. This is just a big threat. Bishop takes knight. So now rook takes is is winning a piece, and Black's trying to gain counterplay with these two pawns. But this should be winning for White. Let's see if White can convert this one convert this one 25 max lenek is saying damn time to get the coughing when you're 25 in the chess world well you know what it probably is isn't it all the youngsters now if you, i mean i don't think that i mean there is hope if you started chess late in your life and i i, I do want to say this i mean like for example Korchnoi, victor Korchnoi, who's one of the strongest ever players to become world champion he did not become a fantastically strong player until later in his life. And one book, if you like reading your chess books, I'd recommend you get, if you're a late boomer, bloomer, whatever they call it, is a book by English 
grandmaster Jonathan Hawkins called Amateur to International Master. And Jonathan Hawkins wasn't a very strong chess player until a lot late, later in his life. And a lot later in his life, he, he basically just improved massively and he just became IM. And in his book, he talks about how he did that. And, you know, he didn't really do much chess until the age of 20. And even later in that, you can still do it. You can still become uh, a very strong player. So there is hope for you. Don't, don't give up. You can always get better. And it's all about trying to improve. That's, that's what chess is about. Going back to the position, um, White's pieces are getting quite near to the Black King, but Black at the moment is defending, and you've got to be a little bit careful. These pawns are coming down the board. Bigfoot is saying, is there hope for me too? No. you just got to say how it is sometimes, you know? You've got, just got to say how it is. There is hope, Big, but mate, what happened there? Whoa, what happened? The piece went. Let me just see that again. White lost a piece. He just he just fell for G five. Unbelievable. And now, Black could even be better here. The, look at the look at that king. Look at the king. Who's better here and why? Now White's trying to come down here. Oh, the moves are happening. I've got to go through them quick. We have this ending on the board. This game has been like a roller coaster, right? It'll probably be a draw then. It'll probably be a draw. Um, probably be a draw. And um, White is still pushing. I mean, White's pawn looks a lot more dangerous, right? And now he's won a piece. They're dropping pieces like, like anything in this game. This is like piece drop city, right? And now that pawn is edging. Oh, that's a nice move. Or is it? Oh, look at that. What a lovely way to finish the game. Great finish there by the Peruvian player. Brilliant, brilliant game there. They're dropping pieces like what? what? What's a good analogy there? They're dropping pieces like, like fine gold drops dad jokes. They're dropping pieces like, like um, Hikaru drops fools. That's not a very good one, is it? They're dropping pieces like, we could go a little bit poetic, like snow drops on a winter's evening. They're dropping pieces like, I don't know. Okay. Like tears, tears for a, a newborn baby. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Like animal dropping. Someone's just saying, okay, I think that's enough of that. That's enough. So there's one more game to go and the scores, you can see the top eight go into the playoff and one player, um, they're dropping pieces like me dropping you as a commentator. If you keep this up, <laughs> thanks, Bic. You know, that's the kind of relationship we have. We're just, we're just, you know brutally honest you know i say what i think he says what i think and this will be my last time commentating on title tuesday i don't think i'll be back again after that so you better enjoy it while it lasts of course i'll be back hopefully hopefully i'll be back um so well okay the top eight so um we can see that adriakin has got to eight i'm sure adriakin's won this i wonder how many times adriakin has won title tuesday i think he's won it a fair few times but there's there's a lot of people on eight points so there's five people on eight so eight and a half i said it will definitely qualify am i am i sure it will definitely qualify i'm not even sure eight eight and a half won't qualify for everyone would it so i think eight points is not going to qualify but eight and a half will it's really hard to it's really hard to say i never know you're never really sure what the winning score will be i mean if you're one of the top guys, do you just take a draw and say, okay, eight and a half, I should qualify? Maybe you do. Maybe you do that. Um, so is, is Fireheart Adiban? Oh, Adiban's a great player. I really enjoy watching Adiban play. Very, he's the most smiley grandmaster around, old Adiban as well. And there's one more game to go. And let's just see. If this is still going on, okay. This looks like this is going to be a draw. Is it going to be a draw? No. White's winning. White is winning. These pawns are coming through. These pawns are coming through like my fist through a paper bag. No, that's not very good, Simon. These pawns are coming through. Okay, I'll give up. I'm going to get the sack. Nice win there for chess school. And we're going to be on to the last round now. So this is going to be very exciting. All these players on seven and a half, they have to try and win 
to get to eight and a half. I think they've got to win on eight points. Do you take a draw or do you play for the win? Well, let's have a look at the top game, which is Nordi Beck versus Josim. Well, that answers the question, right? Draw. <laughs> I mean, can you even have a draw without making a move? That was the quickest draw I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen some quickies. Now, will Jeffrey play? He's got black. He's playing. Oh, is this uh, Samuel Sevlin? I think it is. Let me just check. Make sure. It is Sam Sevian. Maybe there's a bit of a grudge match here. This is a big match. Sam Sevian versus Jeffrey. They're both two rivals, junior rivals, right? Um, I think, I mean, this, are they going to have a draw or do they have some rivalry? Obviously, you'd think if they play in the same team, they might be friends. Okay, now White has offered a draw. There you go. They are just wanting to qualify for the next round there. They're just saying, no, we're friends. We're friends. We're friends. I'm going to skip to the next round, hand in hand, peace offering. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Okay, so are we actually going to see any games? That one is over. Um, now, of course, we're going to see some games on the group before. Now, these guys have to win. A bit of a boring exchange, Slav. We won't go there. Let's have a look at Mamajarov. Now, Mamajarov, he had that quick draw earlier. And he's got to really win this game. He's, I think he's got to go for a win. All these people on seven and a half have to win to get to the next stage. So can he do it? Can he win with White here? Of course, Moskalenko has got to try and win as well. Both of these players, they want to get to the top eight, the knockout stage. They have to go for it. Um, we should mention that we're just talking about Sam Sevion and Jeffrey, and they nearly played each other in the junior speed championships, but are both kicked out. And the finals of this, and this, you, you can't miss this, guys. You can't miss this. The final of the junior chess championships is tomorrow. And it's Nihal Saron of India versus Alexei Sarawana of Russia. That is going to be fantastic. I'm, I mean, Nihal is so strong, but Sarawana, what a, what a player he is as well. That is going to be, don't make sure you don't miss that. It's the final, which junior is going to conquer I'm really excited to to see it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, Nihal played amazing, but Sarawana, he's he's really he's really really strong. Okay, now going back to the position here, it looks fairly even at this moment in time. Black trying to make exchanges, not much happening, and Black is making exchanges now. I would say this pawn structure is a little bit worse for Black. If white can ever, for example, get a rook to e5, white's better. And again, don't look at the computer. I mean, black has to now play rook d5, but then rook c6, very clever. This is the only way to stop that. But if you play this move, I play rook takes c6 because I've tempted your rook to b8. And if you take here, I take here. So this is the idea behind this play. Has this occurred? Nobody's gone king c6, but now rook e5 does occur. And after b5, white should be winning a pawn at some point. So um, it must be, it must be better for Mamajarov here. He's keeping it closed on that area of the board. He's going to win this pawn and try to convert the position when he wins that pawn. Black trying to centralize. Let's have a look at some end game play here, then, shall we? A six played, and not so easy to win. How do you win this position? Do you bring your king towards the center? Do you try to get your... Your rook's quite good here, because if you move your rook, then black plays b4. So white... Okay, I'm surprised black is exchanging rooks there. I wouldn't have done that if I was if I was black, because now the king has can improve its position. I want to, as white, put my rook on this square, but I can't get my rook to that square, because if I ever play rook b3, it allows... Well, pawn to b4. So I don't want to allow this pawn to come up. Let's just put that on the board. Let's say something like this, rook b3, b4. And then that rook on b8 gets active and my rook can't get to c3. So I don't want to allow that one. Okay, well, black's going for another strategy and that is just to play c5 because now black can't play b4. White has moved his rook. Black's got c5 in. Great chance for Mamajarov 
great chance to uh, for Mamajorov to to push in this game. Rook c3. The more exchanges you make when you're a pawn up, it can be good in a lot of cases, but it can also go more towards a draw. But exchanging pieces is generally good, but not pawns. But of course, rules can be broken. And b4, a good move. This is what I said. Black wants to exchange pawns. So he's going to give up this pawn for this pawn if he can. The more pawns that come off, the more likely a draw it will be. And this has now occurred. Now, I, I reckon, theoretically, this is a draw. But black, maybe I'm wrong, because these pawns are a little bit weak. And white's winning idea, I think, will be able to put a pawn on e5 at some point and then try to come with a king. This is what I'd be trying to do. So you can do this in a number of ways, try to move up the board like this. And I would try to get my pawn to this square, I think. I think that's a good good way to progress. Black, on the other hand, is trying to swap off here. So it's very likely to be a draw. But now if he plays this move, we can take rook takes and go king f4. So let's just show that on the board. In this position, again, I think it's a draw after rook a4 here, stopping the e-pawn from moving. So black should draw this. But again, blitz chess, anything can happen. Black's now gone for a different plan. But this is, this is very risky because, okay... It's going to get kicked away anyway. I think black should play a three. Black should be playing a three here. Remember, the more pawns you exchange, the better. And uh, the only the only person who's gained over these last moves is white. And now he's threatening rook here and here, right? Okay, he's gone another way. He can also go king g five. King g five. Black's played this. I don't want to be rude, but okay, king g five a three is is his idea. King g five. Black plays a three, and it's his only chance here. But now the rook has come here. Great endgame play. This is lovely play. And when this rook moves, you have rook takes pawn. King f6 doesn't work. Okay, still chances. But now look at the white king. The white king is so far up the board. I think white's going to be winning this one. An easy winning plan is to put the rook on e5. Place the rook on e5. He's doing it another way. He's just coming around this way to take the pawn. And I think Mamajarov will be qualifying. Uh, very nice endgame play by one of the top players in the world, Mamajarov of Azerbaijan. Of course, he's going to win this. Two pawns is too many. I suppose Black's only chance is to, again, use his king in the most active way he can. Uh, what's White's winning idea? Maybe king g4 and push? Simple. Slowly come up the board. And now, also, rook e5 is, is doing the job nicely here. And here they come, slowly up. You can even win another pawn. Three connected pass pawns. Black is going to resign, and he does resign. So unlucky to Moskalenko. Had a good tournament. Well done to, well done to the winner of that one. And we can see top eight places are going to qualify. And... It is. I was wrong when I said eight points should qualify. It's totally wrong. It's eight and a half, which is the qualifying score. And even some players in eight and a half might not qualify. That is a big score to get. Eight and a half out of ten. You can only drop. You can only lose one game or draw three. That's a massive score. And it looks like we're we're seeing who the players are. And we've got two of the young Americans up there. Mamajarov. Um. I don't know if anyone can catch him. There is a couple of other players who can catch him, right? These two guys. So let's just have a look at that game. This is an important game. White trying to win this game, and he's now got checkmate, which is always quite handy. Did he get into the group? Who's going to be the unlucky one in the top eight? Because someone, ah, oh, very unlucky for the Russian player. I'm just going to bring up his name. Vladislav Artemeyev, who we know. Vladislav on tie break is the only person on eight and a half who's not going to qualify there. And there's your qualification group. So we will have a look at those players. So we know who they are. I'm just going to bring them up one by one. Sorry about the um, Jose Edward, this young player, chess warrior, Nordy Beck, Sam, Samuel there, um, Samuel Sevion, Jeffrey, Adrian of Russia who's won this many times before. 
And then we have Mamajarov of Azerbaijan. He's one of the best players. And we have one Indian player. And let's just have a look who the Indian player is. And the Indian player is, and I think this is a player I've got, Ajun, who is a very good young player. And Lord Balrog is the last qualifier. So who sneaked in at the end? Let's have a look. Lord Balrog, Rustam Kustnatsdinov, who is the last qualifier in that group. So well done to everyone who's qualified. Yes, my pronunciation is certainly my weak point. I don't deny that for a second. <laughs> it's really terrible. Um, you know, you just have to go along, go along with that one. So brilliant. So we, we're going to have a short break and we're going to come back. And just to remind you the way it works now, the top eight players now going to the knockout stage. And you can see here the knockout stage is what's going to happen next. It's really exciting. You have the quarterfinals, only one game. But if it's a draw, it goes to a one minute, no increment, sudden death game. Um, and then you've got semifinals and the finals, which are two games. We'll talk more about that after the break. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. And uh, time to get a quick coffee or something. I'm going to have to stop myself up on one of them. And I'll see you all soon.
<laughs> Hello and welcome back to the knockout. Do, 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 do. It's the knockout stages. The top eight players are now playing for the first to see who. There's only one. There can only be one. And it's going to be fascinating to see how they get on. Um, it's worth pointing out that four of the top eight players are actually players who participated in the chess.com junior event. Um, so it really does show that Blitz Chess kind of maybe is is a really youngster's game. I mean, I'm too old for it, that's for sure. So, for example, you've got Jeffrey Jean. You've got a lot of these players you can see up there listed a bit later on who you saw playing. Um, it's going to be great. Now, the format of this, let's just have a look at the format. We're starting with the quarterfinals, and we're going to be concentrating on Jeffrey's game to start with because uh, he's been playing pretty pretty good chess, hasn't he? And he's been up there all the time. He's American, and he's a great, great player. Um, but it's only one game. So I think it's the higher seed who gets white um, in the tournament. So the person who finished higher, I think, gets the white pieces. It's only one game of three plus one in the quarterfinals. Remember that. Semis and finals is two games. Quarterfinals, one game. If the game is drawn, it goes to sudden death, which is absolutely mental because it's a one-minute game with no increment. And they keep playing. They keep playing that until that someone wins. So there's no draws. Draws are not going to help this one. It's only wins which get you through. In the semi-final, they play one game with white and black, and the final is the same. Now, um, let's just remind you, if you want to improve your chess, an app which is really worth checking out is Dr. Wolf. Go to Dr. Wolf, download it for free on Android or on Apple. Just Google it, Dr. Wolf. It will help you improve your chess, and it's free. So check it out. Um, now, um, I think we are getting very near starting time. So like I say, we're, we're, we are going to concentrate on Jeffrey's game. I'm hoping I can a be able to follow his game. That would be a bit annoying if we weren't. So um, we're just waiting for the players to get ready now. And at least that means I can have another sip of my coffee while we set that one up. And who's? Who, I don't even know who Jeffrey is playing. Is he playing against Nord, Nordybeck? Is that right? Is it two youngsters playing against each other? It is. Well, this is a really exciting match. You've got two of the most talented young players in the world playing against each other. You've got Nordybeck, who became a grandmaster, I think, at 13 years of age. And Jeffrey, who became a grandmaster at the age of five, five years old. He was an absolute genius. He, he popped out. He started playing grandmaster norm after grandmaster norm. No, that's not true, obviously. Okay, he, um, now we're not going to look at that game. This game has started. So just while we wait for our Jeffrey game to get kicking off, this is not Jeffrey's game. You can have a look at the names of the players. This is another game. We're just waiting to see is Jeffrey can start and uh it's okay we're in we're, we're in with Jeffrey's game okay here we are so it starts off with an exchange French Nordy Beck is keeping things very simple I call this the grown variation whenever your opponent plays the exchange French it's like oh no don't play the exchange French please and it's maybe an open an opening that really does well it really does sort of um make your opponent a little bit despondent at times, but it should be even. It should be an even position. It kind of often goes down. I remember Hikaru Nakamura once playing the exchange French against me, and I was like, oh, come on, Hikaru. Why are you doing that against me in a real, in a game, in a European team championship? So I was expecting something much more exciting. Now, it seems to be fairly even. This is a nice idea, because if the bishop comes back to F1, then black will play bishop F5 and attack the square on c2 and if black does if black uh, is allowed to take that bishop obviously black gains the two bishops and this is white's best piece because that bishop it the greek gift i'll just show why the greek gift doesn't work here and i've actually fallen for this before the problem in this position is that after queen h5 which is a standard way black has bishop to f5 
And this is something you need to think about when you're going for the Greek gift. It defends everything, blacks a piece up. I, I've tried that myself before against a grandmaster, and I was very embarrassed when they just went bishop f5. So now white is trying to do the same kind of idea. White is trying to take the bishop on d6. Do we think Nordibek is trying to get go for a draw? Do we think Nordi, Nordibek is... Um, do we think he's basically saying, okay, well, look, I'm going to be better than you in the one minute section, so I'm happy to swap off everything. I still prefer Black's position slightly because where is White going to put the bishop on c1? All of Black's pieces are developed, so he's connected here, but this bishop can't find a square. It wants to go to this square, but knight g6 is very clever because it stops that idea. So if you take here, queen takes d6, where do you put this piece? You have to put it somewhere passive like e3, and this is a really bad square, gets in the way of its own pieces. So white is now thinking about what to play, and he has taken that one, but black's got a very easy plan. He's put his bishop on e3. Black now contests the open file, and this is what white's going to try to do. He's going to try to swap some more pieces off on f4. It's still even, not the most riveting of games, but very interesting to see these two youngsters fighting out. Now, Jeffrey has a time advantage, but how's he going to stop like knight to f4 and then knight takes knight and bishop to f4 and then it'll be dead draw. I think this is white's idea. Just put the knight here. Is he going to play it? Swap everything off, get the draw. Okay, he's not. So maybe white is now saying, okay, well, I'm going to go for this. And black's getting ready to do this one. This bishop is heading out to g3. Always a good idea to push your h pawn here. So there's a bit of play left. It's not a draw yet. Still a bit of play left. White is down on time. I've noticed that Nordy really doesn't like going for draws. And now Black making the exchanges. And Jeffrey, I think, thinks, well, I've got the black pieces. If you want to draw with the white pieces against me, I'm happy to swap everything off. I mean, it's got to be a very even position, this one. There's, there's not so much going on here. Maybe more exchanges can be made here. F6, even symmetrical kind of pawn structure. And I expect King F7 now. Okay. And Jeffrey has offered a draw. Black has offered a draw. And White has accepted the draw. Okay. So they are going to go to the playoff, which I think happens later. We get confirmation. I don't think they go straight into it. Um, if they do, then please someone tell me so I, we don't miss the playoff. But let's go to a much more exciting game now. And this is the Shack Attack playing a young Indian prodigy, Arjun, the only Indian player in this event. And this is, uh, this is a really crazy position. What is happening here, guys? We're just diving into this one. Wow. Much more exciting. The first thing I can see is that white's king is safe. Black's king is not so safe because this rook is kind of in the way. But black has a lot of pawns. Black is three pawns up, three whole pawns up. But it's really complicated. Shaq, with the white pieces, loves these kind of complex positions. But is this really working here? Maybe he's thinking about sacrificing the rook on g4, possibly. And I guess he wants to get his bishop either to this diagonal or to this diagonal. He has sacked the rook. This is typical Shaq. He's got his bishop to this square, and he's going for the attack. And you can look at the, okay, and he's losing even more material. This is a fascinating position. And look, you can see, okay, yeah, you can see this position is just so complex. Queen coming over here. And can black just keep on capturing? Or is the white queen coming in here? Crazy position. I don't understand this position at all. What's happening after knight takes rook? What is happening? He just takes a rook. Nice and simply, threatening now, queen takes h6 with the attack, with the attack here. Just to let you know, two, two of the players are actually streaming, uh, Joss Bem and, and Adriakin. So you can watch them. Oh, hang on a minute. Queen here, and the queen is coming through. This is typical Shaq, and I think this is a massive check with checkmate coming. Can black stop that? I don't think black can stop this. It's game over. And the queen, oh, this is the only way to play it. But I think it's going to be, you're giving up your queen. Can we checkmate? Look at this attack. This is brilliant attack. 
stopping the king escaping here is checkmate. That was a fantastic game. That was my favorite game so far. I mean, that remind that reminded me of the games of the great Macau Tao. And if we go back to the position, if you just look at the bar here, let's just have a look at the bar here. In this complex situation, the the computer really likes black. It thinks it, it thinks that black is nearly four pawns up, but this is not this is not chess at this level. It's often who has the attack, and maybe this this valuation is not even true. Maybe this is preparation. By the way, um, I just think this is a brilliant game. It was a great attack. Shaq is one of the best attackers in the world. His attacking play is just absolutely stunning. And that was shown here. Look at this attack. Dart squares. You have to feel for Arjun, who was with the black pieces, and he got a bit bamboozled there with Shaq playing all these aggressive moves. And look how many pieces he's down. Okay, he's got all these pawns down, and he's the exchange down. And after this move, bishop takes here. The queen is threatening to come in. So black plays h5 and now attacking the queen. And apparently queen c8 is the losing move. So what could black play here? It's very hard now for black to find a move, I think, because the queen is just trying to come into the square and you can't stop it by moving the queen. So it's a lovely game. That was a lovely, lovely game there. Um, now let's remember we, we are going to keep an eye on the the bullet play the bullet play as soon as it happens and um but first of all we've got to get over the the longer time limit and now we're going to go to dimitri adriakin against sam sevion and this is a typical do you know everyone should know this ending this is winning for white this is one of the first endings you learn as a russian schoolboy and when i say a russian schoolboy in this position it's very easy we can check and queen and adriakin winning that game there so nice play sorry sam you are out of the competition adriaking goes through with a nice win there so i think all the games are over and we're going to get to let's just check the playoffs so what happened so we have adriaking's gone through um now in this one this fantastic player from peru has gone through as well Jose Eduardo. And you can see their real names now, which makes my life easier because I don't have to pronounce them as much and get them wrong. And this game is going to go to playoffs. And this is the only game going to playoffs. The other win was this fantastic win for Shaq. The Shaq attack. He's Shaq attacking. So here we go. This is the bullet. And this is going to be so exciting. I'm not going to be the pieces. Another exchange French. Oh, come on, man. We don't want any more exchange Frenches. And, well, is this all theory? Because Black has won a pawn. Black has won a pawn. These are two of the most talented youngsters around in the world at the moment. And Black seems to be doing well. But look at that for an attack. White has grabbed the pawn. He can't take that because the bishop was on pre. And it's now White who has the attack. Unbelievable. He comes in here. It's White who's winning. Like from nowhere. From nowhere, it looks like Nordibek is going to take down Jeffrey Jean. Can Black hold on to this position? I don't think so. The check comes in. And now we're threatening this checkmate. Black's position is just collapsing here. This is really, really sad news for Jeffrey. He's played so well up to this point. But look at the Black King and look at the white pieces flooding in. This is horrible position. And now you can exchange everything on this square if you want to, but White decides to keep the Queen on. And, of course, Nordibek is extremely strong, extremely strong. And his exchange French seems to have worked here. Is there any chance of black? Black's one chance is to play play this D-pawn. Try to get something going with the D-pawn here. Can that D-pawn run down the board? Keep an eye on the clock. Nordibek is up on time as well. He's got two extra pawns, but the queen and knight are very tricky. There's still this deep pawn. There's still a little bit of hope here. A little bit of hope. If this deep pawn can start moving, can it start moving? Well, no, they're dropping. There's no hope now. Is there? Oh, oh, okay. You can take this one. It's going too quick. What happened there? Well, this is this. Is this a draw? 
This can't be a draw. Can this be a draw? White's got three pawns. Can this be a draw? No, because this one, you take it. No, the, the pawns are too strong here. The pawns are too strong. Even though even though a piece got blundered there, the pawns are far too strong. And that was that was a really tough game for Jeffrey, but Nord Nord played incredibly well there. Let's just have a look at one moment, which is quite interesting. Well, first of all, here, I think that Black is doing very well because Black, after this kind of position here, must be doing okay. He probably should just play h6. If you play h6 here, you avoid this trick. Because what happened in the game is that Black, if we go back to that situation, played c5 instead. And after c5, now the Black King becomes a bit weak because this is a clever move. Bishop takes h7 check. And if Knight takes here, then Bishop takes e7, wins material. And this is going to be very bad for the position and what you want in these kind of situations is the safer king and after this check here we see that the game continued with king h8 and now the black king is a little bit weak and another mistake came quickly with this move this is the wrong move because you leave f7 a bit weak and this is another very clever idea because it allows the knight into the position and this is the big mistake Black had to play knight takes because after queen takes, the knight comes in. You can't stop this one. The only way to defend that one's knight here and knight to g6 would have won the queen. So very good play in the bullet section. It's hard chess. Unlucky, Jeffrey. You're going to have another try. You're young. You've got lots of time. But brilliant play from Nordbeck. Nord is through. Okay, so we're going to take a break now before the semi-final. A semi-final is going to be two games. It's the same time limit, the same kind of concept, just with that extra game. So you get a chance at revenge. And uh, we'll see you soon for that semi-final and the semi-final pairing in a second.
Right, so we're now coming up to the crescendo. Do, 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 do. And that is the end of this fantastic title Tuesday, and we're in the semi-finals now. So, obviously, only uh, two more matches, and then the final happens. The semi-final is going to be two games, and it's the same time limit as we've seen throughout the competition, three plus one. And um, if that is drawn, we go down to this crazy one-minute madness until someone wins the game. And then we're going to go straight into the final. So the pairings are, and I believe this is right, I hope this is right, is Joss Pem, who is streaming, and Joss Pem is playing against Adriakin. Um, and Adriakin is a very strong player who's won this many times before. And then in the other semi final, we got Shaq with the white pieces in round one versus Norderbeck. Very interested in that one as well. You've got the experienced grandmaster who's been around for a long time and he's playing against the youngster. So um, these matches are going to be very, very exciting. So we're going to try to keep an eye to start with, I believe, on the game between the two streamers. So Joss Pem and Andriakin. And we'll have a look at that one. And then we will move on to the other one whenever we can, whenever we get a chance to see these ones. But remember, it's two games. So if someone does win, there's a chance to come back at them afterwards and get a revenge match. So it gets much more exciting. Now, I think that's the pairing. Um, I'm just confirming that at the moment. It looks like that's how it's set up. So I hope that's the pairing anyway. And it is Joss Pem versus Dimitri and aching so yeah okay and i think we're ready to go so we're in so here we are with the game we're going to start by following this game both of these guys like i say are streaming and you can go and watch their streams you can see them on the video it's quite i mean so i don't know how some people can play so well and stream um i'm not one of them i could just, i just can't play well we have an open sicilian um on the board you can see Dimitri is showing off his trophies there. Bit of intimidation in the background there. I won I won that trophy in the, the Russian Championships 2010. And now knight to A3. So we have this structure that we've seen before. Remember we talked about the structure, the Moroxy bind structure, where white tries to grab these squares in the center of the board with his pawns. And he's trying to sort of suffocate black. So he wants to stop these two main breaks. These are black's two main breaks. On the other hand, black is very solid. And black is trying to go bishop b7, something along these lines. And just play with the rook on c8. And maybe either get pressure against this one. Or at the right moment, break out, like we mentioned, with one of these pawn breaks. So it's a very famous game. Karpov versus Kasparov, World Championships. I think it was 1988 Seville where Kasparov played this break D5 at a fantastic moment. Karpov had this position, but Kasparov managed to break and he won a brilliant game. And you should go and look at these games. If you want to understand an opening, it's all about the middle game and you've got to know what plans you're trying to do in the middle game. So this, these are the breaks, but white is just white should just try to restrict these breaks. I don't think white needs to do anything drastic. Maybe just play these kind of moves, double up here. But now black's sort of edging out a little bit. But very solid position so far. KG, KG game. Um, so I think just, I, I'd probably just play rook d2. You have to be a little bit careful about pushing with b4. And this is something that white's trying to do. Because sometimes these pawns can actually become weak. Because often you want to play b3 and defend that pawn. But black's stopping that now because he's attacking the knight on c3. You can see they're actually talking a lot, aren't they? They're not just talking. They're, they are really talking a lot. I wonder if that does affect their play. Maybe not. So queen c1, the queen's come back. And maybe, I mean, bishop g5, is that an idea? Get rid of this bishop. This bishop is quite annoying. I'd probably go king h1. Just get my king again off this diagonal. There's a lot of little moves you can play here. Karpov was one of the best players in this position. Karpov used to just stop all these plans. But now black's got a little bit of activity. Are there any threats, though? Is he trying... Oh, is A3, knight B3, winning the queen. Look at that. That would be really embarrassing, but he's not going to fall for that one when the queen has no squares to move to. So what has he played? He's now thinking... White is thinking about what to do. 
because these knights are very annoying. And black is in a position maybe to play d5 because he's, well, well, I mean, can he play d5 now? This is what he's thinking about. It is these breaks that you've got to try and keep under control. But this move might, might be happening, right? D5. Because he's got a lot of pieces now defending that one. He doesn't have to play it. He has other options. But D5 is a thematic break in this kind of structure. Time situation, they've spent about half their time getting to this position. About half their time. And... Well, Adri Aiken's having a long think. He's decided not to play it, and he's played what he thinks is a useful move. Um, I guess this gives him the option of putting the bishop here. Uh, and he could be tempting. Okay, so now White's bringing his queen to a slightly more aggressive square. Maybe the queen can come also to g5 and sort of get a little pressure like that. He's gone queen g4, and now this bishop could maybe join and play. I'm not sure I like h6. He's gone d5. I think he has to break before white can attack. So he's breaking up the open center. Now it's going to get very exciting because who's going to benefit from the opening of the center here? Well, this move is trying to force that knight away because that knight's defending that pawn and then white wants to win that one. But of course, black goes forwards into the position. And now white, if he takes this one, What's what's occurring there? I guess white should be taking this pawn here. You can see him concentrating quite a lot on the position at the moment. What is black's play? Well, black's also got the bishop coming here. This is this is again, this is actually reminding me very much of that game that Kasparov had, where Kasparov managed to break in a similar manner. But I'm sure, of course, Dmitry is well, well aware of that game being Russian and a bit older than obviously uh, jo Jose. And he's grabbed the pawn, and this is just a very complicated position. Maybe now the knight can come here, something like this. White's got this big D pawn. That's the problem for black. White has got this big D pawn in the position. So it's, it's just really balanced. And look at the time. They're both on 45 seconds. I, I predict it's going to end in some crazy blitz here, right? It's probably going to be a crazy blitz finish. Now, just to let you know, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but the semi-finals are played at different times, so we're not going to miss the action in the other semi-final. It's not played at the same time. We can also watch that one after this one is over, uh, and that's going to be sort of this legendary game between Shaq, who's one of the best players, or has been one of the best players, still is in the world, and the younger Nord. So it's going to be exciting um okay so anything changed here well not much it's just very it's, this is a really hard position to work out right i mean look at the time though white's got a 10 second advantage which is quite useful but i i kind of prefer black's position look at these pieces of blacks the pieces are now flooding in but the d pawn is dangerous can black somehow take that pawn but keep an eye on the clock. They're both now 20 seconds. They get one second to move. White is countering with this aggressive attacking move. This is crazy chess. Queen takes d6. And now I think White's just winning. He's tricked Dimitri. He's tricked him because he's pinning. He's a piece up, but Black's knights are a little bit tricky. But can he just take the knight there? No, because he takes the rook. He's going to play this anyway. Keep it safe. Oof. Well, white, white has the better position because generally two bishops are much better than a rook here, as we can see, even with the extra pawn. But just keep an eye on the time. Anything can occur here with the time. Keep an eye on the time. Hello, Magic TT. Hi. There you go. I'm a sucker. So can white convert this position? He's now starting to attack the pawns over here. And Black's pawn's looking very, very weak here. Also, five seconds left. If if Black can exchange one pair of rooks off, that will help him a lot because this rook is so active and the rook should be able to coordinate with the pieces. So Dimitri is holding on, but keep an eye on the time. He can't be going for a draw. Go rook b5. You've got to go rook b5. No. Oh, and Dimitri's playing for the win. That is so brave. 
Okay, they took the draw in the end. I think White should have played on that position. Maybe it was something like Knight here, but I can understand. I can understand that this is complex and they're straight into the same game. So either side wins this game, they go through. This is the big game. One of my favorite openings to Trompovsky. Dimitri doesn't like going for main line theory. And Trompovsky is in a way to avoid the main line. And he's now got kind of a Jabava position, Jabava London position, where he's gone E4, and now it's a French defense kind of position. So it's changing a lot. He can even push on with the pawn going to E5 here. But he's going for a very aggressive setup, castling queenside. This is the kind of chess that Dimitri plays extremely well. These kind of un unorthodox, aggressive positions where he can later go for the attack. And he has gone for a very sharp line. Exciting, exciting chess, right? Now, what should Black be doing? I don't really like Black's position, but he's got to attack. Okay, and he, maybe he can put the knight on c4, get the knight to that square, or he can just try to do a pawn storm. So now Dimitri is trying to open up a line towards Black's king, because at the moment, Black's king not developed. On the other hand, Black taking over this square with a piece, which I think helps Black. Because how do you get rid of a knight if it gets to that square? The knight comes here. This Jose is so talented, isn't he? This young, the, this this guy playing, the young kid. Because I can't imagine he gets the, the same type of coaching that obviously Dimitri has had. I don't know. But obviously being from Peru, they don't have many grandmasters there. So what, what a talent this guy is. What a talent. Um, they are both streaming. Um, it'd be a bit weird if they're just sitting there talking to themselves. Uh, it's kind of what I'm doing at the moment, but you're here listening at least. They're both streaming. You can go and check out their, their, their streaming as well. Someone said, I coached him. Did you? Well, if you did coach him, you've done a very good job. Now I like, well, hang on a minute. What is happening here? Is the queen in trouble somehow with knight c3? Can we play knight c3? This is what Dimitri's thinking about. He hasn't done it. He's done for a more safe move. And this is, Black still hasn't castled his king. So it looks like Black has a nice control of the center of the board. But the problem is, now Bishop E4. Bishop E4 might just be winning a piece. This could be it. This could be it. Dimitri might just be through. He might be through. Keep an eye on the cameras. He might be through to the next round. Look at that. You can see it on the cameras. You can see it. Jose has just realized that he's blundering because when the bishop gets there, he had to get rid of the knight, which was defending that square. He's realized he's just unfortunately thrown this away. And Dimitri should be through to the final now, unless he blunders. The only chance is to trap this bishop. This bishop is now trapped. It's not completely over. It's not completely over. Everyone is talking to themselves in reality. That's actually a good point. Everyone here is kind of talking to themselves. This is like COVID times, isn't it? We, we don't actually, we're not actually talking to each other face to face. It's all very weird, but we are here. We're a community. And maybe somehow Jose has managed to keep the game alive. I, that was, that was, it's unbelievable he's found this resource because now the bishop is trapped. Yes, you can take that pawn, but the problem with taking that pawn, you, you've got two pawns extra, but this file is very open. So, Dimitri trying to hang on to that, but I can't see that bishop lasting long. I suppose the point is, if black tries to take it with his queen, at least white can exchange the queens off the board. And white wants to exchange the queens off the board because his king is a little bit open to attack here. Meaning that these lines, when your king's open to attack, get your opponent's most dangerous piece off the board, which is the queen in this position. Get that queen off the board off, off, off. Okay, but now a nice first move because where is the queen going? I think, you know, somehow I think Jose is back in this game. Maybe just bishop e7. Just saying, okay, I blundered a piece. I'm very happy to have a draw. This would be really disheartening for Dimitri. Is he going to take the draw? Is he going to take the draw and go to bullet? No, he's playing for a win. Okay, well, that's that's a brave decision. Black is a pawn down, but black has this file to attack on. It's got a lot better for black. In actual fact, you know, I think black's position is a little bit easier to play because he can quickly castle, get a rook over here, and try to push for this one. 
and just attack here. So now White's Knight trying to get into the position, maybe to c5. I mean, Jose, I don't know how old Jose is. I think he was playing in the chess.com young events, and he's a really talented player from Peru. And again, they don't have the opportunities that a lot of other people do with men, having many grandmasters in Peru. So he's clearly, clearly a bit of a prodigy. And he's, he's putting up a great fight here. Okay, so now Black's getting ready to potentially put a rook here and sacrifice on a3. Can you imagine that? So rook to a8, bishop takes a3, and then the rook comes into a3. And you open up the white's king like a, a can of tuna. Okay, another idea. He wants to go b4. So white is controlling that square with his two pawns. So we're told he's maybe about 20 years old, roughly 21 years old. Okay. Now, it just depends. At the moment, white has stopped everything, but now we see this idea coming. So white stops that idea as well. He blocks the bishop from sacrificing itself. So I still think that Dimitri is a bit better here. He's done well. He looks a bit worried there. Look, look. I just saw his, his, his brows went, ooh, a little bit of brows. So here they are. Queen is coming here, and, well, it's still a major fight, this one. Because if you try to play queen b4 now, then there's rook a4. It's a draw. Oof. Wow, wow, wow. That, I mean, it, it was, I don't know if it was a low quality game. I mean, when you look at the, the bar here, it looks low quality. But, I mean, Jose must be over the moon. He must be over the moon because it looked like he was completely lost. In this position, he allowed bishop to e4. So this is now the one minute game, the one minute game. It's all down to this. Whoever wins goes through. I can't believe he survived that one. It must be it must be in his favor now. He's got the white pieces and he survived that position. It must be favorable to, to Jose. So let's just have a look. They've got to play very quickly. There's no increment. Both players, brilliant bullet players. Who's your money on? Who is your money on? Who is your money on here? I don't know who I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for... Oof. I think it's much nicer having the white pieces in these positions. Um, I've seen the way that Jose attacks. Is he going to take that one? Come on, take it. No, he hasn't. He's keeping it for later. And now D6 is a little bit weak. Black should be doing absolutely fine here. But you've got to watch out for this sacrifice. And now Black's knight is coming into this nice square on C4. So white's queen side is completely destroyed this queen side is completely destroyed and i don't think the sacrifice is ever going to work so you're going to, so black's doing very well this looks really good for dimitri but it did in the last game as well it did in the last game as well psycho cowboy doesn't take draws the psycho cowboy never draws he prefers to die in honor or dishonor honor normally okay well again look at this somehow out of nowhere he's created these threats how does he do it you turn your head for a minute and he's got away into the position he's won a piece i was talking about psycho cowboy and white's now winning he's a piece up and he's got more time unbelievable unbelievable he dropped a bishop he dropped a bishop and that's checkmate oh well done jose i can't believe how did he do that i literally took okay i want to see that i took my eye off the ball for a minute how did that happen? He went bishop g4. Really? I think he just, I, he even mouse slipped. Maybe it was a mouse slip or, I mean, he, he even mouse slipped there. I think it might have been a mouse slip or he just didn't realize his queen wasn't on d7. I think a mouse slip is most likely. Oh, that's really, really, that's really, that's really harsh, right? That is really harsh. You mouse slip here, you drop a piece and you drop the whole thing. So he mouse slipped. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well done to Joe Zado, who went through. And he did play well. I don't know how he survived that first game. So unlucky, Adrian Aiken. And we have now a finalist, Jose. And now we go on to the next match. And this is going to be another match. Who's going to get in the final? Is it going to be Shaq, the very aggressive player, or is it going to be Nord? Now, is he going to take here? This is an old line he used to play with E4. And it's actually a line that I used to play. Come on, go e4. Oh, he hasn't done it. He's gone for a more positional approach. And we'll have to wait and see if the veteran Shaq can go through against the youngster. 
Now, I think Shaq was, like I say, number two in the world about five years ago. He's he's because he's very sort of dynamic player. And his um, you know, his play can go up and down, but when he plays well, he plays amazing. He plays absolutely amazing. I was just highlighting his name there in case people weren't sure. But Nord, Nord is this young player, and um he's you know, he's he's really one of the one of the biggest young talents around at the moment. Um, he is, Shaq is lower rated than Nord in this, but of course this is online chess. In real life, Shaq is much higher rated um, than Nord. But I've seen this opening being played quite a lot by Nordy Beck. He likes this line where he gives up the bishop and it's quite a risky way to play. Now, this is all very much theory where White goes into this ending and this is one of Nord, Nordy Beck's favourite kind of endings. He, he believes that white's bishop pair is not that strong it's not that scary so we're going to see now what white plays and white simply takes on d4 and he's going to try and rely on his two bishops in an open position but if you see me commentating on some of the other title tuesdays you can remember that nord won a very beautiful game in this various in in, in this variation he's, he has lots of experience in it now, maybe this is a slight improvement. He wants to get an attack going like this. so And he goes for this pawn. Okay. I thought he was going to take there, but he's gone for a much riskier line here, taking on B2. And I think I think just by looking at the times, this is a little bit uncomfortable for Shaq, right? Because the problem that Shaq has is that maybe he's not as well prepared as, as Black is. I still think with the two bishops, he can't be worse. And this is a good move trying to tie down the bishop on c8. If that bishop moves, you take on b7. Even if he exchanges queens here, I still think white's doing okay because the two bishops in an open position are good. Okay, very good move. Stopping bishop takes b7 because of the queen. And now, does white have compensation for the pawn? I expect this will end in a draw, personally. I, I, I'm going to go for a draw in this game. That's my most likely. My most likely guess. And, but White's got to prove the compensation for the pawn here. I don't know how easy that is. If he moves the bishop, Black takes the queens off, but White does have a bit more active rooks. But I think Black's done perfectly. He's, the opening's gone very well for uh, Nord so far. This youngster. When did he become a grandmaster again? Was he 13 years old? It's crazily young, yeah? Crazily young. <coughs> So how does white play this position? Okay, he's going to try to swap queens. And he's relying on his rooks being more active and his bishop having pressure against a2 to have enough compensation for the pawn that he's lost. So you can see that now his rooks got very active. And I suppose he goes rook c1 here, keeping the rook on the seventh rank. Yeah, Collar Zume, you're completely correct, Collar. This is the game I was thinking of. It was sheer off, wasn't it, that he outplayed in some ending. One thing that's really impressed me about Nord, who's playing the black pieces here, you can see in the webcam now, is just how good he is at um, some of these slower manoeuvring games. He's a really, really good endgame player for such a youngster. Now, black trying to keep things safe, but white trying to get his pawn back now i think this probably will be a draw but knowing nord he won't take the draw i know this kid he doesn't like taking draws okay he's gone for it he's gonna try and get a pass pawn on b3 on the other hand shack gaining space on this area of the board this area of the board maybe h4 and g5 is going to play. Try to. This is very good. When your opponent has a knight, a very good strategy to play against the knight when you have a bishop is trying to kick that knight around with your pawns and make sure that knight doesn't have many good squares. So try to kick that knight away from any squares it's got. And the more pieces here that black can swap off, the better, because then he's got a pass pawn coming on this side of the board. So if black can swap off pieces, he's doing well. So I think black has the chances here. I think black has the chances. It could be. I mean, it could be a very young final if we get to it, right? 
two players from the chess.com youth competition, but I still think this is going to be a draw. White's got enough activity in the position to draw. Enough activity in the position. So we're seeing hello Rakesh in the chat is saying that Shaq was world champion before Nord Nordibek was born. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. You know, Shaq was one of the strongest junior chess players around for a long time. Now, obviously Black's trying to win this one with the extra pawn, but I think it's going to be a draw. And White also has this very strong pawn. You know, Black even has to be a little bit careful. If Black tries to win too much, this pawn could become dangerous. It should be a draw. I think it was always going to be a draw with um, Shaq's, shall we say, um, experience. He's got great experience. He knows his endings very well. And maybe they're just going to repeat position. No, of course, Nordy Beck plays for a win. Of course he does. But now the White King's coming up. You don't want to play for a win too much as Black here. Yes, you're a pawn up, but sometimes you have to take the draw because if this pawn starts coming forwards, there is some danger here. So now, actually, I think it's Black who has to be a little bit more careful here because now the King is coming up again. And this is this is quite, this is a little bit dangerous. It should be a draw. Maybe they, look, look at the time. Maybe King D5 is the move to play. Look at the time situation. Not so easy. Okay, he has played King D5. And White, if anyone, is making progress. But now we're getting many exchanges here. This is a clever idea. I missed this idea. Black's going to have two connected pass pawns. Aha, he hasn't taken it. He's kept that pawn. Should still be a draw. Should still be a draw. But I do now... Oh, D5. Why didn't he play D5? Play D5. Go for the win. Shaq should play D5 here. Play for the win. He's going to go for the draw instead. Okay. He's decided to take the draw. I mean, they're straight into the next game. And it's a little bit... A little bit like the last one. A win here for either side will go through. We have a Grunfeld variation on the board. Yay! Yeah! Come on. My favourite line, this one. This is my favourite variation. This is a... The Harry attack. He's obviously watched my chess.com videos. This is a very rare move. It was Grischuk, one of the first players who played this against Magnus Carlsen, actually. Magnus Carlsen played the Grimfield. Grischuk played this idea. And the idea of this move, just to show you, is to try to distract the knight away from the center. And if you do distract the knight away from the center, white can take over the center because black's knight can't take there anymore. And then you can come through here. So we go back to the game. I don't want to go too far. And white now decides to take that one off and play queen c2. Nice, aggressive play from Nordibek. And white is playing, I like this, very aggressive chess. He can now start throwing these pawns up the board. This is a scary position. A bit of a scary position, right? A bit of a scary position for black here. It's easier for white to play. White can just go boom, boom, boom. And here he comes attacking. So Shaq is going to have to get attacking on this side quickly. I like White's position, though. I know the computer says it's okay, but White's got his development. He's now going to have to think of a way to break this down. Now, how do you break this down? It's not so easy to break down. So if you go G5, White plays this. Okay, so Shaq is trying to get activity, opening up the bishop on G7 as well. If that pawn there moves, the bishop on G7 becomes a good attacking play. That's a nice energetic move. I like that move. This is much more interesting um, than the last one. Okay, now White maybe can even take with a bishop or knight here, get a get a nice piece. I think bishop takes his best because that bishop is so strong on that square. And you might even have ideas of e5 and queen takes g6. What about e5 here? e5, queen takes g6. Is that possible? e5 looks very interesting. Okay, he's gone for another way. And maybe he's... Uh, is he going to take here? Go h6. Ooh, this looks to me very dangerous to black, but maybe black is okay. I prefer white's position though. Just because this bishop is such a good attacking unit. He's gone e5 now. And can you take on this square now? This is what he's calculating. Pawn takes h6, bishop h6. So what I want to do, I want to play this move. And if you go here, I go here, and that's going to be checkmate because look how strong the bishop is pinning that pawn down. So that's the kind of idea that I'm trying to achieve here. So is he going to... So he's thinking about it. So takes, takes, h6. You have to take on e5. So the king has the h8 square. 
So he's having a good think about this. Is he going to play it? You can see Shaq is looking relaxed. How relaxed is he, though? How relaxed is he? So let's have a look at that again. He's thinking about this position. Now, can he do anything here? Maybe not, because now if we go check, the king goes to this square, and there's no follow-up. So what's he going to play? This is obviously quite tempting, but I don't know if it works. He's gone for it. He's gone for it, and he's gone here straight away. Woo! Boom! This is crazy chess from the young kid. He's really playing aggressive. I love it. I love it. And now queen takes g5 with h6 to come. Is there any beautiful checkmate giving up the queen? Nope, but now h6 is a threat. But can black defend this? Bishop takes here. This is complete. This is a brilliant game. He's going all in with the sacrifice. I think black, okay. But now bishop takes c6, actually. Is there anything? Oh, no, queen here and queen here. That wins, doesn't it? Check. Just go check. And then queen here, check, and h6. No? What was I missing there? Why didn't he check? Is this... Oh, okay. Let me just show that. Oh, oh, no, because the king goes back and you have a draw. I was thinking in this position after the check, you go here, then you go h6. But let's have a look what happened. Bishop e4, threatening checkmate. And then... Oh, this was nice. Beautiful game there. Naughty Beck played a brilliant game. He won in 21 moves. Look at the end of this game. So he goes, queen h6 check. This is a fantastic. Bishop h4, threatening checkmate. The only way black can stop that is by playing f5. And now he just comes back to d5. And in this position, black resigns because the only possible move is rook f7. And here white can just go check. And that rook is pinned, so it can't move. And next move, white's going to take that rook. That was a fantastic, a fantastic attack from white. Maybe, let's just look at this position here. The queen is coming in, the knight is coming in, and it's this bishop, which is the winning piece. Fantastic play. He's brave. He's he's really dangerous, this kid. He is he is something. He's some player, isn't he? And look at this move. Queen g6. What a brilliant idea, yeah? Absolutely. He's an absolute monster. Absolute monster. And after king to h8, queen takes here. Maybe black can defend this, but I don't know how. How does he stop h6? This is not an easy position to defend. Maybe you have to play f6 here. No, the bar says no. I don't know how you defend this position because h6 is coming. This was a brilliant game. Well done to Naughty Beck. Totally deserves to be in the final. Okay, so we've got the final coming up and we've got the two youngsters playing. It's the same format. It's two games and then a playoff if needed. We're going to see who's going to be title Tuesday winner and it's going to be brilliant. I mean, these are two of the best players throughout the competition this week and they're two of the younger players. That was, that was again, they're playing some beautiful chess. One of my favourite games of the whole event today. Uh, absolutely stunning play um, from this young grandmaster. We'll be back in no time till... Just trying to have a little little toilet break and with the finals. See you soon.
we're already back and pretty much ready for the final. So it's going to be a, a fantastic final. And we've seen both of these younger players playing some stunning chess and they deserve to be in the final playing against each other. Um, and we have, of course, two, you know, this youngster from Peru who's um, done very well. And obviously Nordibek, who is throughout Title Tuesday, seems to be up there performing brilliantly. And you just saw how he beat one of the best players in the world in 21 moves. That was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Um, so yeah, very, very, very impressive. And they will start their games very soon. So we'll have a look who is the um, going to be the winner. It's the same format. It's two games, two, two games. And if it's a draw after that, it goes down to bullet and it's basically bullet. And uh, yeah, and, and then they're just going to crack on. So we're waiting for them to start. It should happen any, any, any moment now. I just got to hopefully get the game so I don't miss them. And we'll have a winner of this week's Title Tuesday event. And let's also remember there's some other great events going on tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to the final of the junior championships on uh, chess.com. Make sure you follow that one. It's because it's going to be massive with the Indian prodigy Nihal Sarin playing against Russia, Sarawana, Alexei Sarawana. Make sure you tune in for that. So they've started. So we have the Italian game. Remember, it is two games. So if one player loses the first game, they can still come back. So far, we've seen draws in the first games, and they're playing a very solid setup here. This is often a manoeuvring game, quite a symmetrical position. White's trying to say that his advantage is that he's got a pawn here. Black's got a knight here, meaning that he can play d4 a bit more easily because it's supported by this pawn structure. But black is very solid, and black will often bring the knight around to g6 here. This is a very normal manoeuvre because then Black's Knight can try to come into this square later on. And also you get ready to play C6 yourself. But H6 is sensible. You're stopping any pieces coming into G5. And on the other hand, White gets ready to play the standard maneuver in the Spanish positions, this kind of maneuver with the Knight. So um, Bishop to E6 is played. And um, again, this, this is a nice move. You're just trying to get rid of White's most dangerous Bishop. And here, I've seen this kind of position before where black often gets a very nice attack down on the F-file. These double pawns are not actually a weakness. Norm normally, you'd consider double pawns to be a weakness, but having two pawns in the center can be very good because they control a lot of squares, especially when you have this kind of free pawn configuration. And black now moves his knight into the F4 square. And the idea of black's play to use this rook and the knight in combination Still okay, still a solid position. This is probably mostly all theory. But this idea of going bishop e6 is, is sort of a, a new modern, modernish idea. There's been some nice wins in this. A famous one, it got awarded second best game prize in the Chess Olympiad, the online Chess Olympiad that chess.com run recently. You should go and check that game out. Got it on my YouTube channel and many others' YouTube channel. So now there's a threat of knight takes h3 because of this one. He can't play it now because the king takes, I think. Even though the king comes up the board, it's pretty safe. So one thing you want to do is go here, pawn takes, queen takes f3. But the king is now defending that one, so black's trying to improve his forces over here. I just I just think this kind of position is it's okay for white, but it seems like black has a little bit more activity with the knight on this square. But now white's making exchanges to cause some pawn troubles. So it's still okay. Not much has changed here. Solid, solid position at this moment in time. And the only danger is we said these pawns are okay because they defend a lot of squares. But if a lot of pieces get exchanged off, they will become weak, especially that one there. Because you can't play d6 anymore to defend it or play f6 to defend it. So this pawn here could be a serious concern later on in the game. Um, Black trying to bring his knight around somewhere a bit more active, attacking the position. I don't think these moves are ever working now because the rook defends the knight on this square, but this knight on f4 is a lovely looking piece still. I do like Black's position still. Maybe the knight can even come this way, you know, bring it around. Maybe he's trying to do that. You could even combine it with g5 and knight g6. I was like attacking my opponent's king, and to me, it seems like Black has the opportunity to do that. Maybe just keep it closed over there play a5 in the position, which he has done. 
you don't want to open up lines on the area of the board where you're weakest. And because white is advancing on the queen side, black wants to keep the queen side closed. And he has played this idea now. He's going to try to maybe bring the other knight here. And things are starting to get a little bit scary around here. Maybe h5 and g4 is coming. White's sort of defending, but black has the more aggressive attacking position. And now he has to come back. He might be trying to blockade that idea with putting the pawn on f3 because the knight on f3 was becoming a target to g4. If black ever plays g4, it's attacking the knight. And in this situation, white can play f3 and defend that one. Black's still coming forwards. There are lots of ideas here. I mean, is there something immediate that can happen? I can't see it. White defending. It's very interesting position. Remember, if, if Black's attack doesn't work, Black will have problems maybe with his pawns in the center. So this is the issue Black has. Maybe some problems. Who are we, who are we, who are we shouting for now in the chat? It's interesting. Who are we actually going to... Who are you guys? Who do you guys want to win? I mean, they're both great players. <coughs> and as you can see, though, Jose is commentating at a great pace. I can see that. He's, he's maybe speak. Is he speaking more than me? And playing brilliant chess. It's uh, it's incredible how how he's doing that. So now G four is getting ready. I still like Black's position because I like attacking. But white should be okay here. Of course, white's okay. White might be able to sneak around the side here. This is a danger in the position. For example, if white can... Okay, look at that move. What is that? I never think about putting my knight on such a square. I think he... Is he trying to go f3 and knight f2? That looks madness to me. I mean, look at these Look at these silly pieces, right? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, would, I, I wouldn't... I, I would never find that move. Knight to h1. Hmm, I play like I play like Carlson. Very clever move, which no one understands except for me because I'm a genius. I am Jose the genius from Peru. And now black is going for the attack. And well, this is the idea to go g3. And it might just be a brilliant move, but that knight is never getting out, right? It's never getting out. And now, oh, it's happening. It's happening. Black is going for it. White kicking that queen away, but black has the attack. This is getting firework stage. Both 30 seconds. Both 30 seconds. Rook D7. So he's trying to get rid of that one. Come into the position. Queen D7. Start some kind of counterattack. And now black defends that one. I didn't know that smarter chess. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's true, but do do send me the blog post. I do appeal to the old men. I'm not a youngsters kind of person. No, I hope so. Hopefully, we open all doors. Well, that'd be interesting. Thank you, smart chess. Give me a link. I'll be interested to see that. Obviously, thank you for posting anything about that. Um, so, okay, we're back to the game. Who would you rather be? I mean, it's always easier at this time limit to attack. And Black is playing a brilliant game. You have to applaud Nordibek for his attacking play here. And look at that knight on h1. That knight on h1. Oh, my words. What is happening? He's taking here. Where is the finish? He's going to take the rook. So he's got his piece back. And now he's coming into the game here. Knight g4. He, t he opens up the white king first. Maybe it's a rook h7. This is cr crumbling. Brilliant game there. Absolutely brilliant game. Oh, there. That was oh, that was that was a fantastic game, fantastic game from Nordibeck, who's gone one game up, and Jose, he just got pushed back there. He just got pushed back. <laughs> I like that. Find gold the most popular with the ladies. <laughs> Sorry, it just made me laugh for some reason. <laughs> just picturing that. Okay, well, the reason that um, Nordibeck. <clears throat> has played this system here is because he only needs to draw. He's one point up. And if we just go back to his decision on move six, taking on C6 often forces this variation, which we're going to currently get to, where white gets the queens off the board. So white gets the queens off the board. And by doing that, you increase your chances of drawing. And white structure, 
you could say is is better because you have the four pawns over here and the three pawns here and black's double pawns in this struck in this position is not good in the last game because they are not in the central center of the board white knight comes to f4 and now white can put that knight into d5 so so far i think this is a very clever um a very very clever way to play uh, and it shows a lot of maturity from the white white's, white's playing white's not taking any risks if he manages to to draw this game he is the champion black has to win black somehow has to win this position how's black going to win this position he's got the two bishops can he get the two bishops working uh, i'm not sure how but now he's going to try he's going to try to get some of the dark squares over here by controlling some of those squares with the bishops you could even like throw the h pawn up the board that's not so stupid at all get that one going and white now maybe trying to get rid of one of those bishops either that bishop has to capture or we're going to take that one no 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 you're not taking my bishop thank you no 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 bishops are not coming off the board bishop g3 trying to offer the exchange there it's still still very even structure i'd say very even i don't see how black's going to get through this as long as nord does not blunder here he's just got to avoid blundering play sensible moves he's doing perfectly he looks so cool doesn't he on the camera no stress whatsoever i, I mean i'd like are we going to see some good celebrations i mean i hope so he certainly deserves to celebrate so maybe this is the only thing black can try to do is to mix it up is he going to take there but that, then you drop this one okay he doesn't he's going to just centralize his rook maybe try to get his rook to f7 to defend that one white making more exchanges and clearly white is doing fine here in actual fact i still like white because he has the better pawn structure this pawn on b5 can be quite good because it clamps down on black's queen side pawns and these pawns later on can go up the board so white i think is a bit better even here in this position yet yeah, they are playing for a thousand dollars first prize um a lot of money for a kid i don't think i ever won that much when i was a kid well i didn't actually ever win anything when I was an adult either but when you're a kid it's a lot of money what's the most money i won in a chess tournament i i don't know maybe maybe i won three or four thousand in the british championships coming second a couple of times but i can't remember it's not it's not great money if you're trying to make a living from it let's put it that way <laughs> okay so black now has an idea but white white's pawns he's now showing how his majority of four pawns versus three is good Oh, yeah, I did win. Bix reminded me that me and Bic won $1,200 when we worked as a team in the Twitch Rivals competition. Oh, yeah, Bic, the dream team. The dream team. So I still, yeah, that, that was a good, good day at the office, that was. And now, well, I, I still think White's doing very well because if you ever played a rook here, I can always go C4 defending my pawn. And the problem is, at some point, you can just see this pawn coming forwards. The white knight stops the rook coming there. The pawn on a4 is another weakness. This pawn here, you know, you could even try to go like something like rook a3 and take that one. But black's creating a little bit of counterplay. It's all going Nordy's way. Okay, so now the knight is trying to come and annoy that rook even more. There's another weakness. That is the f6 square. The knight slipping into that one, attacking the rook, attacking f6. It's not looking good, but there is a check. Yep, don't always, a good bit of advice. Always look at your opponent's move. See what they're trying to do. It's trying to come in there and stop it coming in there. Black is getting desperate for counterplay. It's all, I mean, White's just played so well throughout the competition. You can see, look at his face. It's like, oh, that is pure concentration. If you could like just bottle that concentration and put it into your own game, I, I would go up like 500 points. Well, maybe like five points or something, but still. Okay, well now at least he's okay. He might, is he going to win a pawn? Is this getting interesting now? No, because you've got C4 defending that one. 
but the knight is now coming to e5. Aha! So if, if black gets his knight to this square, you can see how dangerous that would be. So was this the right move to play? White now has played e5 to stop that maneuver. That is positionally very clever. The one thing that's really impressed me by White's play for, throughout when I've seen him play at such a young age, he finds these positional ideas so, so well. But Black's back in the game. Black is back in the game. He's he's two pawns up now. He's still got a chance, 24 seconds, to, to make this a playoff game. He's got to win. Black has to win. And now he defends the pawn. He's now two pawns up. Somehow White's position went wrong. I think White is okay here. He must be okay because look at this centralization and he has a much more dangerous pawn. He's just going to try to defend this one. What's Black's next move? C6, maybe? Okay, stopping G4. I would be seriously thinking about this, but now White's trying to grab, grab that one. And Knight F6 is checkmate. Knight F6 is checkmate if you can play it. Whoa, is that checkmate? That's one of those ones you're like, huh? how can that be checkmate? Let's say I go, for example, Rook, Rook B4, Knight F6 checkmate. That is just ridiculous. So you have to stop that one, and your king now has the escape square here. I think black is coming back into this. Let's just keep an eye on the times now. Black is back in. Unbelievable comeback. Can white hold the draw? Can he hold the draw? White is one pawn down, but what's black doing? He's got to move. He's moved, but now knight takes g4, something like knight d5. Or is this the move? Rook takes. Oh, my words. That pawn looks so strong. Don't go there because of knight c4 check. These pawns. Can black win this one? Exchange up, but those pawns are so strong. I, I mean, this should be okay for white. White should probably be winning here. He's just thinking about the right way to play this. If he goes here, the rook becomes behind, but then you push the g pawn. Is this how he's going to do it? No, nope, he's getting rid of that pawn. I think he's just trying to draw the position, but this is a little bit dangerous. Black has chances. Black has some chances here in this ending. It should be a draw if you keep these pieces close together. We saw this ending early on in the Sviddler game. We saw this in the Sviddler game, but it's, a, it's still not an easy draw. Black has some chance. Remember, Black has to win to bring it to playoff. White just needs to keep these guys close to each other. As soon as you start moving the knight and the rook away, your knight can get stranded and it can't be defended. It can get trapped. So that's the key. This ending, keep your knight and your king close together. And I think he will draw this. He seems like he's doing all the right things in the position. Black has to try everything. The first thing black needs to do is get the king to the back rank, but white's king is just in the middle of the board. I don't think he's going to manage to do it. He's just holding the draw. This is great end game play. He's not even, he's not even giving black any chances. No chances at all here. Okay, now the king comes up, but again, 50 moves. Are we going to get to 50 moves <laughs> in this one? I think we are. I think we are. I think it's going to be a draw, and I think Nord is going to be... Is this the first time he's won it? It certainly won't be the last time he's won it. Okay, now now these now these are separated. Was that wise? Oh, he can come to c6. <sighs> one second left. Oh, it's a draw. Okay. Well done. Are we going to see some celebrations there? Are we going to see some celebrations? Not really. Okay, Jose is 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 much more passionate uh, after that one than than actually the winner, Nord. But I think we must thank both of those guys, both of those juniors, for such a great event, right? What an event that was, and what a final between two young and amazing, amazing talents. Um, Brilliant play from both of them and a great, great final who clearly have a brilliant future uh, in this and in chess in general. Well done to the winner. And we're going to have the winner, I think just the winner on the stream to interview him very quickly. Uh, we'll make it quite quick, I think, the interview, but it'd be nice to hear his thoughts. And um, yeah, to maybe see how happy he is of winning first prize. So we'll have a short break. We'll set the interview up. Don't go anywhere. It's the end of the show then. But let's hear the winner's thoughts first.
Well, what a titled Tuesday. Um, I really enjoy commentating on it. And the star of this title Tuesday, which is really the strongest online event in the world, was this youngster here, uh, Naughty Beck. Congratulations, first of all. Yeah, thanks. How does it feel to win? It's um, excellent. I mean, uh, I'm first time won this title Tuesday, even first time uh, qualified for the final. I mean, not knockout. Uh, I mean, in knockout final. Yes, I, I, I've seen. I've seen in the past you've done very well and uh, you've qualified, um, but you've never been in the final. And now yeah. you've uh, now you've won the final. And I have to say your game, your game against Shaq, this this quick attack, um, was was one of my favourite games of the whole competition. That that must have been enjoyable. That that sacrificial attack at the end there. Yes, uh, it was. Maybe I messed up somewhere, but like Queen G6, King H8. Uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, so strong because it feels like uh, this must be crushing, but uh, somehow it's not easy. Not easy. But I mean, it, practically, it's very hard for him to defend. Yes. And uh, with the tight, I mean, it's impressive beating someone so strong like that. And uh, I mean, uh, so when, when, what age did you become a grandmaster? And at 13 and one month. 13 in one month did that make you was it the second youngest in the world or the youngest i i can't remember yeah at the moment it was second youngest second youngest in the world okay great stuff so you're going to become world champion one day is that right <laughs> oh, yes <laughs> that's that's the aim i guess right yeah. mm-hmm. and well i mean your chess has been absolutely fantastic here and it's it's been great Great, uh, great to watch. I've got one, one more final question. And again, congratulations. And uh, the final question is, if you were stuck on a private island and you could only be with one other chess player, who would that chess player be? Um, <laughs> tough uh, question. Yeah, a very tough question, for sure. Sorry. Uh, probably uh, with Gary Kasparov. Gary Kasparov, okay. Yes. Is he... Is he one of your favorite players? Yes. Your your favorite player is he? Yeah, I I read uh, his book like uh, Gary Kasparov on Gary Kasparov, uh, his okay. uh, three part book. I yeah. I read like fifty times. Fifty times. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's a lot of times, right? Yes. <laughs> so, would you recommend the book to everyone in the chat? Yeah, to, of course. Read? Okay, yes. great. So, so there you go. If you want to get, if you want to get as good as this young prodigy here, you've got to read Gary Kasparov's book, and that's why you'd be stuck on an island with Gary Kasparov, right? Right. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> okay. Well, look, I'm going to let you go now. Congratulations again. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining me in the interview, and, and good luck. Good luck for your future chess as well. So, goodbye for now. Cheers. Wow. Bye. And let's just have. Hello, but hopefully you can hear me now. Now we can look at the bracket. So you can see the bracket of how these players got there. And um, it was a very, very good title Tuesday. I really enjoy com- everything to do with the commentary this uh, this week round. Uh, great to have so many of you in the chat. But a little bit disappointing, I guess, with some of the American players there, Sam and Jeffrey, who played so well in the run-up. And they got knocked out in the first quarterfinals. But that doesn't take anything away from that very gracious winner who we had on Nordibek. And also, we should say a congratulations to Jose, who also um, played very, very well. And you should check out his stream. It looked, it looked like a lot of fun. Now, what's happening tomorrow? Well, tomorrow there's going to be an event you'd be crazy to miss. It's the final, the final of the Chess.com Junior Speed Chess Championships between Nihal Sarin and Alexei Sarawana. India versus Russia. These guys have 
defeated many players to get to this situation. And that's going to be absolutely brilliant to watch. Um, so I'm going to be tuning in for that and uh, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to have a day off so I can just chill out and watch. And you can look at the Smarter Chess match prediction. Uh, they both got phenomenal grades there and it is weighted quite heavily in Nihau's favour, 63% um favorite there and this smarter chess is it's a great thing you can go and check it at chess goals for a lot of these calculations on how you know the stats affect and prediction prediction models so make sure you tune in for that i'm pretty done in now so i, I like to say thank you to everyone who's come along here to enjoy this title tuesday hopefully we'll be back and commentating on it again in the future maybe i'll even get a chance to play in the future i probably won't qualify never have done but you know the dream is there and uh, have a great day or, or night wherever you are in the world goodbye from me and thank you to bic um who's been the producer and everyone else at chess.com who's helped so see you again another time <laughs>